Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, welcome to a uh, Clash of Code stream. So we're going to be playing coding game Clash of Code, uh, which is a competitive coding game. Um, we'll all be dropped into the same room and we'll all have the, a certain amount of time to solve a coding problem. So that's the plan for today. Um, yeah, and if you're not familiar with it, if you go to codinggame.com with one G, coding game with one G, um, you can see it. They have a, they have other things. I've really only ever played Clash of Code, but maybe one day we could do bot programming as well. Because with bot programming, we're all trying to program our own bots against each other, something like that. For now, we'll just do Clash of Code. And you can see uh, the rundown of how it works here. Um, essentially, we'll get to choose which mode we're going to do. We'll probably start with uh, fastest mode. So that's essentially the, the first person to solve the problem. Um, and then you can use any programming language. Um, I'll just uncheck all of these. It should, it choose, should choose all of them by default. Um, but for like the fastest challenges and the reverse challenge, you can use whatever programming language you want. Um, I'm going to start off with JavaScript, but today is going to be the day where I try to solve it using other programming languages. Um, so, uh, when we get to that, I'll spin a wheel and, and, uh, yeah, there's no uncheck all button, but now it says all languages. Um, but when we get to that point, I'll spin a wheel and I'll choose what programming language I want to use. Well, it will choose for me and then we'll we'll jump into that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's set status, all one word. Yes, set status, all one word. <clears throat> but how how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Welcome in. Are you all ready to play? I do realize uh, for some people, they don't necessarily like uh, competitive programming. All good. Glad to hear it, William. And what's up, Ucha? Welcome in. Um, but um, I always say um, you're really just competing with yourself. Like, don't treat it like a competition with everyone else. You're just competing with yourself to, to solve it as fast as you can solve it, not as, as fast compared to everyone else, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's crazy, Avi. So the extensions that you write, they um, uh, it goes out to over 100,000 users. That's crazy. Uh, it's, that is a really big number. But that's, that's awesome that you get to write something that that, that many people use. Um, yeah, no worries. That's this part. Glad to hear it. Ready to rock and roll? All right, let's get into it. Honestly, let's just jump right in. Um, there's not as many people here today. I don't know what's going on, um, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's easier. It's easier to keep up with the chat. Uh, so let, actually, let's do quick hellos, and then um, we will uh, we'll just get right into solving some. So if you want to say hi to me, you can say hi, hello, hello, hey, yo, cheers, greetings, hi, what's up, what's up, morning, afternoon, howdy, good day, coding, hi, oh, hi, or boga, hey. Say any one of those things. And I'll do my best. Yeah, we'll say hello. I will say hello. There's, there's, we're gonna say hello. Uh, Mark, hello. How's it going, Mark? What's up, America 2050 and Eddie and Amara and Salahuddin? What's up, Poplip and Zelino and Freak Zombie and Avi? Hello, uh, uh, Nishan Traj. What's up, Dr. Phantom and Jimbo Baggins and Innisfer? How's it going? What's up, Excavator and William and Wucha and JT Fogar and Schizo? Glad to see you all. And Guten Abend, Flo, uh, Flo Rider. Glad to see you. Hello, Amara and Eddie. I don't know if I got to say your name, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Welcome in, Don Pelu from Chile. Glad to hear it. All right, let's go ahead and do it. We're just gonna we're gonna start right up. We're gonna do a coding game, uh, Clash of Code fastest mode. You can use whatever programming language you want. Here we go. Nice. Thanks for thanks for running your bot, Andrew. So if you click that link, uh, and Eddie, thank you for the gift. You are kind. Thank you very much for that gift. If I had to choose one framework for life, what would it be? Probably Vue. Vue is nice. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, click that link. You'll be dropped into the room. We'll, we'll wait a couple of minutes for people to join, but up to 100 people can join. And we don't know what the problem is going to be. We're going to be presented with a random problem, and then we have 15 minutes to solve it. <laughs> you never turn the bot off? Is it running on a server somewhere? For life? Yeah. Well, Nux then, because I guess Nux gives you backing capabilities. Yeah, Nuxed. I would use that for the rest of my life. And uh, Chien, welcome in. Glad to see you. <clears throat> oh, it's just running in the background. I see. 
Well, yeah, you you yeah, you <laughs> you get to choose the language, but like I said, later I will choose a random one. Um I don't I don't know if it is America 2015. Ohio? I think I just got, yeah, I just got a, I got a, <laughs> hi, Mark. That's what, it, that's what it matched to, so. Oh, that's Hey Guys? It's not on there. It's not on there. But it matches your first message. Next project win. When the view ecosystem matures a little bit more. <laughs> All right, not many of you. That's okay, though. Let's get right into it. Hmm. Cool. So if you're new to Clash of Code, uh, on the left-hand side is the problem description. On the right-hand side is where you can write your code. And in the drop-down, you can choose which programming language. Uh, if you click right here, this will show you your example test cases. So example inputs and outputs, input, output. Um, and then you can run the test cases to do that. And uh, Clash of Code is a little bit different than normal coding challenges. Essentially, it's looking at the output of the console. So you're not going to be returning your answer. You're literally just going to be logging the answer answer out. Yeah. Uh, and Imchin is asking about Prisma or TypeORM. Choose Prisma. Prisma is is really good and uh, much better supported than TypeORM. Okay. Line one, our input is eight binary digits, and uh, our output um, is an integer n, which is double the ones that exist in the binary digits, given an input. Okay, so we need to find all the ones. In this case, there's four ones, and then double it. Okay, that's, that's, that's a little bit too easy. We'll do it in a one-liner, um, and we'll get it on the first try. I'm confident. I'm confident. Um, can I go full screen here? I can. But then I can't scroll. Then I can do that. Like this. Okay. Um, here's, here's what we do. We filter for each digit. We want all the digits that are equal to 1. Um, and then we're going to grab the length of that and multiply it by 2. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that, Ennis. I, I want to do more coding improv soon. Um, byte.filter is not a function. I guess that's true, because we need to turn it into an array. So that would not have worked. I, I get way too confident with these things. <sighs> All right. <laughs> First try? No, technically second try. <laughs> All right, and I got fifth place. So if you submitted yours, click on share code so we can take a look at how you did it. Uh, let's see how Drunky did it in Python. Um, <laughs> again, so Drunky likes to have a lot of uh, utility functions that they add. Let's look at where the actual problem is. It is here, <laughs> the actual solution. Um, so two times, take the input, count all of the ones, and multiply it. That's pretty cool. I, I didn't know Python had a built-in count function. So I guess count is built into strings in Python. Um, and what's up, Codex? Codex, nice, nice new, uh, new icon. Did you have that designed? That's that's nice. Nice, nice. I mean, I guess obviously you had it. Oh, you made it yourself. Sick. That's sick. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is really cool. I didn't know Python allowed you to count something inside of a string, and then that gives you the total number multiplied by two. Great work, Drunky. Uh, and yeah, and if you're wondering what all this extra code is, Junkie likes to solve them as fast as possible, so they have a bunch of helper methods that they always paste in, so that way they can solve it as fast as possible. All right, we'll see uh, Tomas, who did it with JavaScript. Uh, similar to how I did it, except they used array.from instead of array.split. Uh, roughly the same thing. Array.from takes an array-like object. A string is an array-like object, so that worked out. Um, great work, Tomas. And then Alphatron did it with Python. Same same strat. Count the ones in that string, multiply it by two. Um, and uh, Ashish, if you want to share your solution, yeah, let's let's see what Ashish did. Um, cool, yeah. And so this is this is the other thing. So in Python, they use the built-in count, 
in JavaScript, both uh, my solution and um, Tomas's solution, we used filter, which is an array method. But uh, Ashish just did it the standard programmer way, literally iterate over the string. If it's a one, increment the count. So un under the hood, the Python count function and kind of like the way that we implemented filter is basically doing this. It has to iterate over the string and then, uh, yeah, so standard for loop, iterate, if it's a one, add, and then you have the total count and then multiply that total count by two. Uh, you have my solution, which is turn the string into an array so we can use filter, uh, give us back an array with only the ones, get the length of it, multiply by two. Uh, all right, refactorer did it in PHP. Uh, substring count. So substring count is a function built into Python where you can pass in the string and the thing you want to you count. Fascinating. JavaScript doesn't have something like this built in that I know of. Um, we, we have to count manually with like filter and stuff like that. Uh, okay, William Cameron did it with JavaScript. Yeah, split it to an array, filter it, length, length times two. Very good. Find all. And, uh, it's, but it's still the same thing as filter, right? But I guess find all is pretty new. Um, and find all only works on... Wait, why? It's not even on can I use? Yeah, but then you'd have to use a regular expression. Okay, I can't even find find all. We, this is our first one, Finder the Ice Finger, our very first one. Uh, all right, Dr. Thu did it with JavaScript. Turn it into an array, filter it, get the length, and Freak Zombie did it with JavaScript. Nice. So just instead of even using filter, they just have a standard for loop. So for every character in the byte, if that character is a one, increment the count, multiply the count by two. Very good. All right, and then uh, uh, Durkerim did it in TypeScript which is just the JavaScript solution. <laughs> the, only, the only thing they got here was, I don't know, uh, I don't I guess, yeah, I guess TypeScript would have made sure that they can only compare character, uh, strings right there. Yeah, it's possible that uh, it's still a, an open proposal. Stage one, stage zero, finished. I don't even, it's not even listed here. I, I, it's probably somewhere, but I don't feel like finding it. <laughs> All right, let's, let's do another one. Um, here we go. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I saw it too. I saw it. It's going to be in ExpressScript 2023 or something like that. I don't know. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So in any valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript. But TypeScript adds type annotations on top of JavaScript. So yeah, technically... A lot of TypeScript solutions will very likely just look like JavaScript. All right, let's do it again, but I'm going to choose a different programming language. Um, here are your options. Rust, Java, C Sharp, Go, Python, Ruby. Throw out some other programming languages that I could possibly learn today. So all of the ones I've listed, I've written at least one line of code in all of these programming languages. PHP, Swift. Scala, COBOL. Is COBOL, I don't think COBOL is on here, is it? Yeah, you can't choose COBOL on here. Hey, yeah, what's up, Opti? Yeah, so Rust is on the list. Uh, Clojure? Is Clojure on here? Yeah, Clojure is on there. Lua? Oh, Haskell? C++? Is R on this list? It's not. VB.net, just for fun. All right. I'm not going to put all of the languages. I guess it's like a subset of them. All right, here we go. What language am I going to use? And also, uh, we'll just start this. So click this link. Um, you can join the Clash. And um, I'm going to use Haskell. Haskell. I actually have written Haskell before, but Haskell is its a functional programming language. It's so weird. Okay, so we're, I'm going to try to solve this one with Haskell. Yeah, good luck. I, here's the thing. I have 15 minutes to learn how to use Haskell and solve the problem at the same time. So uh, as, as gonna, <laughs> that's going to that's gonna be an endeavor. 
Yeah, I mean, we can look at um, learn X in Y minutes for Haskell. We've got, let's say we've got uh, four minutes to brush up on Haskell. Um, data types, easy. Strings, numbers, lists, easy. Um, chat's in 30 seconds load mode? That's a, that's a, that's a long time. Let's, um, three seconds. Uh, yeah, so this is the basic stuff. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, see, here's the thing. This learn X and Y minutes makes Haskell look very approachable. When you start getting into like the real functional programming stuff, it's like really hard to read if if you don't have a functional programming background. Um, yeah. Uh, so honestly, today the, I, I I don't know what's going on. Um, but there are not a lot of people in the chat. Usually we have like roughly two hundred people in the chat, and I pe keep slow mode on so that I can at least catch like. I at least have a fighting chance of the messages that are coming through. Um, also, it prevents people from spamming. I read most of the messages. You really don't have to spam here, so that's why I do it. Um, and thank you for that stretch, Philly J. All right, we have this reference. We could probably get the Haskell Lang website. Uh, get started. Write your first Haskell program. I wonder if there's a, yeah, the playground. Maybe this will help because I can put like Haskell code in. You don't need to spam your messages. Right, right. <laughs> Excavator says, I'm taking a functional programming class. I still have no idea what I'm doing. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, all right, let's get into it. Here we go. I have 15 minutes to learn Haskell and solve a problem all in one go. So if you're just joining us, left-hand side is the problem description. Right-hand side is your code. I'm going to choose Haskell. You can choose whatever programming language you want. Um, what's nice is it typically does all of the setup for us. So like all of this code is required to like read the input. Um, I think. <laughs> so yeah, we have like the variable in uh, an input. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But Let's read the problem description. So you're given an array T, which consists of 10 space separated integers. Great. You're also given an integer N for the number of swaps to perform. Each swap instruction consists of two integers A and B, which are the index numbers to swap. Swap the numbers at those two index numbers in the order as given. If any index number is outside the range, output error. If there is no error and all swaps can be performed, output the swapped array as a, a 10 space separated integers. So, for example, we're going to get an input with all of the numbers, an input that says how many swaps need to be performed, and then each line performs a swap. So this says swap index 0 with index 1, and then our output would be this input, but with the first and second one swapped. Seems fine. Okay, I, I, I'm pretty sure I can do this. I'm pretty sure I can do this. So, um... I just have to figure out what this generated code does for us. Uh, so I think so. Let's just look at what in is. I think in is gonna maybe gonna be, and then uh, yeah. So then I guess so we have input in, and then each input line. So put string line input. That should output. Oh goodness. Wait, wait. They gave me comp they gave me code that isn't all isn't even isn't going to compile? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um Okay. It outputted answer. I want to output input Oh no, it's in. In I think is an array of the numbers. Is that is that right? Oh, because it's not a string. Put string. Okay, put 
Output list? How do I output a list? Pascal. Uh, print list. How do I print a list in Haskell? Oh, just print. This is equivalent to print. Okay, so I just do print. Um, print in. Okay, so in is the number of lines. Um, print input. That is okay. So input is is an array or a list with each of the each of the items. Great. Um, it's okay. I'm gonna figure it out. So we're given input that has all the numbers. Great, and then we have in, and then this code is gonna run for every in. So a and b are gonna be the two things that need to swap. So let's actually just print uh, input at a and print input. At B. Uh, but this is where we need to do print line string. Variable not in scope. What? Print string line. Perhaps you might punch. Yes, this is what I meant. Oh, it's put, not print. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. I just want to make sure that this is doing what I'm expecting. Okay. Um, could not match expected type. Um, let's comment that out. Let's comment that out. We know that input is a list. So uh, let's actually just print A. That should be the first. Yeah, so that's zero. Um, so if I do uh, input at A, that should be a string. Um, but its type is string. Um, I guess I just want... Uh, integer to string? Oh, yeah, you, that might not be a valid syntax. Okay, so I, I I need to figure out array access. List. Um, yeah, I just need to make sure I'm doing array access correctly. Um... um I guess we're just gonna search uh, search DuckDuckGo for everything. Haskell print element in list. Print a list of elements. That didn't help. Shows how to do it when it assigns the variable. Oh. Yeah. Then we we're, here's the thing we're over we're shadowing the variable input. Um, let's call this line input. And apparently they use underscore case. I mean you probably don't have to. We're reading from a list. This is this is fascinating. Um, so if I do input at A, that can't be right. Yeah, I, I, need, I, need, I need to, okay, we need to, um, we got to take a step back. Haskell get element from list at index. Finding index of an element in the list, how can I get the nth element in a list? Okay, but what if we have a variable? Because, th so this is doing, uh, it, we know the specific index, but if it's a variable, do I need the bracket notation? I guess 
I could try chat GPT. <sighs> okay, we'll try chat GPT. Um, is there a parenthesis? Oh, parenthesis. Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> so, I don't even know why I'm trying to print to output it. Um, what we need to do is we need to swap them. So um, let's just look at Haskell swap index in array. Um, Modify a value at a specific array index. Create a new array. <laughs> yeah, so that's the functional programming way, is create a new array. Um, I don't like that answer. Um, all right, let me log into ChatGPT real quick. I don't have time for this. I don't have time to log into ChatGPT. It's just it's just taking so long. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, how much time we have left? We have five minutes. I, the thing is, like, I could figure it out in five minutes. I just I just need to figure. Okay, I, I think I can do it. A gentle introduction to Haskell arrays, array creation, accumulation. Um. Traverse the list and then update it? Are you kidding me? There's no way! Differential functors? Okay, so now we've got ourselves some swap functions. Hopefully that code compiles. The code doesn't compile. Um, the fact that you need a Stack Overflow answer this long to swap two things? Here we go. Yeah. This is kind of what I need. I just need a function that I can call because apparently, because of uh, functional programming and immutability, um, great. Okay, so now I have elements at, and then I need to be able to use that. We got four minutes left. Um, you can implement your own version. Um, so then, how do I invoke a function? Do I just do uh, swap elements at? Um, Uh, A, B, input. Um. Yeah, A, B, input. And then, um, print the input. Couldn't match type bracket with IO. Oof. Um. Can you show me how to call the function, too? <laughs> um, I guess technically the, the proper way would have to, do, to do it would have been to create a copy of the list. Oh, oh, I did it wrong. Okay. Mm, line 32, it just still doesn't like it. Um Oh, is it it's expecting a list of integers. Okay. Um Q 
Can I? So basically, I. I guess I could rewrite this to be a string. Or no. Um, couldn't match type character with int, expected type int, actual type string. The second argument, well, line input zero, line input one. So A and B should have been the, the two indices. Yeah, so zero one, those would have been the two indices, but for whatever for whatever reason we can't use them. This function we copied maybe d doesn't work on a list. Swap two? We've got 26 seconds left. There's no way I'm going to solve it. Um, variable not in scope, swap two. Perhaps I meant swap two? <laughs> oh, swap two prime. Why did they do swap two prime? Oh. Well, uh, I I want to I want to solve this though. So let's uh, let's let's see if I can just get it in the Haskell playground. Um. So if I have a function, yeah. So it's swap two prime. I don't know why would. <laughs> uh, I'll have to look at someone's Haskell solution. It's very possible. Here's the thing. Like with with functional programming. Um. You typically don't want to modify variables. So like this swap in place, you actually don't want to do that. You want to write a function that like basically maps the list to a new list with the swapped values. Um, but I guess just as a quick example, like if we have... Um, say put... Result, swap two, zero, one of a list that has one and two. How do I assign a variable? <laughs> variable not in scope, put. How do I get access to put? Oh, I have to declare the data type. Okay. Um, is put just provided by... Oh, print. is It's print. <laughs> we'll get there. All right. Could not match the expected type. The function print is applied to four value arguments, but its type int int has only one. In a statement of do block. The expression. Um, which means I need to put this in a variable. Um, oh, because it doesn't return anything.
Um, okay, and then how do I assign to a list? Or assign to a variable? It's with the colon, but how do I define a list of in integers? Uh, int list other way around. All right, I'm going to look at the person's solution that did it. Uh, Junkie, can you share your Haskell code? Because um, I want to see. <laughs> I'm having a real hard time with uh, uh, viewing variables. I don't know if you can hear me, Junkie. Oh, you got zero. You got zero on Haskell. Did somebody solve it with Haskell? Like, they got it right, though? Um... Anybody? Define the type and then assign it on the next line. So list is like a reserved word because it's a type. Um, let items. I mean, I honestly just need to go through a <laughs> I need to go through a Haskell Haskell beginner tutorial because it's so fundament fundamentally different than like every programming language I've ever used. Um but okay, let me see if I can get ChatGPT going though cuz it could probably yeah, but it it wouldn't let me log in. I don't know if it's overloaded right now. Here we go. Um Define a list of two numbers in Haskell. I spell Haskell like that. I don't believe you. <laughs> I tried this. I tried, I tried this. Um, Uh, define it with types and pass it into a function. Oh, okay. So yeah, the this thing is the name of the thing. Okay, so I I got that wrong. Um, so it'd be list, list. I guess I'll call it items though. So items. Um. Oh, I did. I did it. Look, look what I did. I I did uh with the brackets on the right instead of wrapping it. Is that really what I need? No, it still does not like this assignment here. Um. Let's see if this code even runs in the Haskell playground. Yeah, this code doesn't even run. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> um Oh well, okay. What's your code, Oscar? Well, we have to import the array data type. I feel like we shouldn't have to do that because it is just a list. It, 
here's where it might be going wrong. I'm I'm treating this like individual lines of code, but maybe you can't do that. Like everything is a function. And so like every line of code needs to be a line of code in a function. Um what's the error? Is it just let? I get the error when I try to run this code. <laughs> um let 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 <clears throat> All right, here's the thing. I've got my list now. So now if I do swap two, zero, one, my list. And then I put or print my list. Variable is not in scope. Items? Okay, we're closer. Um, because now... I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll have to come back to this. The thing is, we have to take Haskell off the table because I, I don't know how to define variables and I can barely access things inside of lists. So Haskell's off the table. For the next one, I won't, I won't try to use Haskell. Um, but let's see. So Albatron did it with Python. Um, they iterate over each of the inputs. They get the two swaps and then they do the classic swap and then print the list itself. Um, and then you had the use case where, or the case where if the indices were greater than the list, you'd print an error. Easy. Uh, Admiron, similar idea. Um, swap it using this syntax. This is, this is interesting. It looks close to like destructuring assignment in JavaScript for, for swapping. Um, let's see if William came, oh, uh, so Ashish did it in JavaScript. Let's see if they did the, yeah. So they used a temp variable. There's a way to do a swap using... Uh, destructuring. Did William Cameron do it? Um, no, they have a temp variable as well. Xeris, did you do it? No, you have a temp variable as well. Ghouls only drink coffee, did you do it? No, you have a temp variable as well. Dr. Phantom? No, you have a temp variable. <laughs> Anybody? There we go. <laughs> Dr. Thu did it. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, I see your chat. I, I, I guess I... I Totally glanced at it. This is what I mean. So in JavaScript, technically, you can do an inline swap with destructuring. Um, so this says A at B equals B at A, all in one line without a temp variable. Yeah. Temp variables make it, you know, easier to read, probably, if you don't understand this syntax. Um, but that's fine. Cool. All right. How did you do it in PHP, Refactor? Yeah, oh, look at that. Uh, PHP has... It, what looks like destructuring assignment. This looks like JavaScript, this line, except for all the dollar signs. It's the same thing in Python, in uh, PHP. That's pretty slick. All right, what about in Java? Yeah. It, here's the thing. You should, you should know how to swap two values in an array using a temp variable. Um, that's just classic, classic computer science programmer stuff. But it is interesting that certain languages have nice built-in ways of doing it without the temp variable. Yeah, PHP costs a lot of money. Uh, cool. 
<laughs> John did an enclosure. Oh, wow, John. Did you get it right? No, you got 0% enclosure. But, uh... Crazy, crazy. Okay, that was fun. Let's do it again. But this time, I Haskell is off the table. No, no chance of Haskell this time. Um, look at Tomas. Let's see. Oh, you got a zero percent. Oh, but you tried to do it with Haskell. Let's see. Um. Oh, okay, their helper function is already creating, like, a new list, I think. Well, and that's, and that's, that's, what, that's what I wasn't even thinking about. Like, basically, this, one at a time, is, like, swapping each. So, we... <sighs> temp variable... Set input at A equal to input at B. And what do you do with input at B? I think I think you were missing that, because then you need to do input at B equals input at A. Okay. Couldn't use anything it returns, yeah. Oh, well, let's try again, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to use Haskell this time. Honestly, I, I need an entire stream dedicated to Haskell so I can get the basics of it down. Trying to learn it in 15 minutes is not the play. Um, I think pretty much everything else on this list I could learn in 15 minutes, except for maybe closure. Uh, but um, here you go. This is the next clash. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're playing Clash of Code. If you click that link, you can get dropped into the room, and then we'll all be given the same problem to solve at the same time. Um, you can choose whatever programming language you want. I'm going to choose... Ruby! Ruby. Ruby? <laughs> Ruby, like almost PHP. All right, we're going to use Ruby. I have done Ruby before. Um... But let's look at the learn X and Y for Ruby. And then uh, we'll look at the Ruby Lang website. It was close, close. Yeah, so Ruby, just it just looks like Python. And it's it's basically Python with like a bunch more built-in stuff. So you can, there's a, there's, you write a lot less code with Ruby as well. Uh, and Vedith, thank you for that resub. Um, so data types, easy. Uh, lists, easy. Hash tables or objects, that's good to know. That's good to know. This is like a JavaScript object. Um, and it is dynamically typed, so you can have a... Well, I guess a hash, a hash could have different data types for the, for the values, which is good to know. Standard if statements. Uh, put string is how we output stuff to the console. Um... We've got while loops. I think we can do this. I'm, I'm confident we can solve this with Ruby. Um, well, that's the thing. A lot of Ruby solutions are one-liners because they have just like built-in functions. Um, can you tell me more about Ruby? Try Ruby in your browser. All right, we'll do that. What's the difference between this and the playground? Seems about the same. Um, read the Ruby documentation. All right, we've got the docs up. We've got a playground, and we've got learn X and Y minutes. Let's go. Make everyone reuse Ruby? It's too late now. I already started it, but maybe we do that next time. We spin the wheel, and then everybody has to use it. All right. Left-hand left side is the description. Right-hand side is your code. Uh, drop down, you can choose the language. I'm going to choose Ruby. See, th this makes sense to my programmer brain. Um, get the get the get the input, split it on strings to turn it into an array. Um, for uh, i is zero up to the length of n. Read in. Well, get that specific input. 
do something with it. Okay. Find the greatest common divisor of in integers. I bet this is built into Ruby. <laughs> so <laughs> if we just search for GCD, we're yeah, look at this. It's this is this is what I'm saying. Um uh greatest common divisor. Um come on, go, go. <sighs> um Is built in. I'm oh, glad to see you, Fitz. Thanks for being here. So uh, you take a list and then you say GCD with some other item. Well, you take a take a number GCD with some other. Return the greatest common divisor of two integers. What does this want us to do? Um, return the greatest common divisor of in integers. So we could just we could we could chain this. So we could basically just say for each one the result. Um, equals, um, I'm guessing, yeah, inputs at one, and then our list goes from one, and this would be inputs at zero. So we grab the first number in this list, wait. Yeah, we grab the first number in this list, set it equal to the result. And then for each one, the result is going to be result.gcd with a. Done. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Um, I'll submit it. Um, I, I'm curious if they have a built-in way to do GCD with like a list of numbers. Because basically what I did is I, I just chained it with every one in the list. So. When I gain more real estate, if I close the left sidebar. Oh, I don't know if I can. If I can, I, I will, yeah. It's a reduction with the GCD, yeah. So we went over the list, and we grabbed the GCD as we went along in the list. Cool. So let's see how Whale did it. Yeah, so here's we go. We, they did a map and a reduce. This, this would be the... Seems like the way to go. So basically, you map... Well, actually, no, so they just did a map. Mapping turned every string to an integer, so now we have a list of integers, and then we reduce it by calling GCD on each of the previous ones. So, nice, nice. Yeah. My watch? This one? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I think that's just the blue screen uh, that has some weird effects. Is that what you meant? Well, P... This is also insane. This is why it's it's crazy to use P, uh, Ruby for uh, shortest mode because P apparently is print. Yeah, that prints it out. Um, all right, Junkie did it in Ruby as well. Nice. Yeah, so they did the reduce. So there's two ways we're seeing here to to map it. So uh, split the array, or split the input on spaces to give us a list, and then map that list to uh, the two i function, which turns it all into integers. Um, this similar thing, but you don't have to use parentheses. So the parentheses here were optional, apparently, uh, which makes it look even more, I mean, even less terse, I guess. Well, even more terse. <laughs> Without the parentheses, it's a little, a little bit crazy to see. I guess if you want to chain it, you need the parentheses, and then reduce. Uh, you say use GCD. Fascinating. All right, Ashish did it with JavaScript. Um. Where did you get the, oh yeah, the GCD function, this is a recursive version of the, uh, so yeah, in JavaScript, we don't have a, a greatest common divisor function, so uh, Ashish had to implement one, which is a recursive version, so uh, if B is zero, the greatest common divisor is A, otherwise, do the recursive call with B and the remainder of the division of A and B. So that'll get you the GCD of two numbers. And then they also pass that into reduce. So for every number, get the GCD as, as you go. Wouldn't you just use a regular expression to kill the spaces? Um, the, the way this problem is presented to us, it is a, an input line that is a string of numbers separated by spaces. So in this case, uh, you probably wouldn't use a regex because you need it as integers. Yeah. Welcome in, the Shibas. Glad to see you. And thank you for the gift. <laughs> too kind. You're too kind. Um, all right, uh, Alphatron did it in Python. Look at that. Python has a GCD function built into the math library. 
uh, similar. So this is similar to how I solved it with Ruby, where you have an initial result and then you reassign the result by getting the greatest common divisor. Nice. Uh, Purple Dre did it with Rust. Okay. Um, the code that matters is here. So for every value in the inputs, um, turn it into an integer. Um, and then we have our inline find the greatest common divisor using a, a while loop instead of a recursive call. Um, and then we're just reassigning to A every time. Fascinating. Fascinating. And then look at my solution. I... <laughs> I left the code that they gave me. I just grabbed the first one as an integer, and then I have a loop that goes from one up to the end, and uh, I convert each one to an integer and then call the GCD function on the previous result with the next one. Uh, Oscar did it in Scala? Let's see. Yeah, this, this also looks very approachable to me. Um, so GCD, you also, you had to implement the GCD function. So this is the recursive GCD function. We saw the same solution in, uh, JavaScript. Um, and then GCD of a list had some, has some pattern matching. So, oh no, this, and this is a recursive, <laughs> recursive, uh, function as well. So if the list is nil or null, uh, then it's zero. Um, Uh, fast, fascinating, but <laughs> uh, basically just pass our list into this recursive function here. I don't, I don't get this pattern matching though. What is, what are the x and the x y and rest in this pattern matching? It, does this say if the if the list length is one? Is that what this says? Um. Otherwise, get the the first two in the list. Explain this pattern matching to me, Oscar, because the input um, is the list, and then we're matching the list here. Did you do it with chat GPT? <laughs> Are you frantically Googling to, to learn how to do pattern matching in, in Scala? Um, <laughs> Jet GBT is giving you the answer. Nice. Um, head rest. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Thank you, Del. So I was like, what what's going on here? But that's basically the the first value in the list and then the rest of the list. Um, yeah, so th this is known as pattern matching. Um, I guess you could think of it like, uh, it's like a switch statement where the cases are all of the, the, the cases in a switch, and then the right-hand side is potentially a function that'll be invoked if that's matched. So that's why you see the arrow, but it doesn't have to be a function. So um, if we pass null into this function, then it's going to return zero. Uh, if we pass a list where uh, that has a single value and null inside of it, then we just return that single value. If we pass in a list that has more than just a single value and null, then it's going to match here, which gives us our two values, the first and second values in the array, uh, the rest of the values in the array, and then we then we use those. So we then call this function recursively with the GCD of those two numbers and the rest of the array. Does this create a new list? Yeah, then this would, this would create a new list with only a single greatest common divisor in the rest of the list, and then each iteration narrows it down more and more to a single value in the list. I'm going to assume that's kind of how it works. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
a list with only one element is that matcher. So, um, the the nil there is that just basically saying that uh, the end of the list is like a null pointer that which means there's only one element in the array or on one element in the list. Um. Yeah, I feel like this is an easier to read Haskell. I could, I would say that. But, um, um, yeah, Dalp, is that accurate? Like, uh, this will match a list with a single value. Um, because nil would mean the the list that would be the end of the list. Fascinating. That's that's a cool solution. All right, let's do it again. Again, again. This time, wherever the wheel lands. Everyone has to use that language. That's too easy. Oh, Python, uh, PHP, nice, <laughs> nice. Everyone has to use PHP. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I love it. I love it. You have to solve this with PHP. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I'll, I'll send you all some resources. But first of all, here's here's the clash. Use this as an opportunity to to learn a little bit about about PHP to embrace it. <laughs> if you if you want some docs on PHP, there's the learn X and Y minutes, and then uh, let's grab the uh, PHP Lang website um, documentation. I guess yeah, it's just this. You could use ChatGPT. You you could. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, actually, I think you have to, you can log in with GitHub. I don't think you can log in, I don't think you can play without an account. You can try, if you click that link, it might let you join without an account, but I think you need an account. Um, yes, all of PHP. <laughs> A simple tutorial, maybe? What do I need? I think it's fascinating, though, because the docs probably have a lot to do with, like, building servers with PHP. What we need are the basics of PHP. Lists, arrays, uh, string manipulation. Yeah, we probably want language language reference. Is This is probably closer to what we want. Um... I'm proud of you all. There are 26 of you that are going to attempt this with PHP. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, stay on this page and contr uh, control F for the thing that you need. Yeah, because this has strings, arrays. Uh, learn X and Y minutes also does too. So I'll give you at least what I know about PHP. Every variable has to start with a dollar sign. And refactorer, thank you for the, the 35 month reset. <laughs> Who says, let the PHP flow through you. I will do my best. Um, so yeah, if you want to define a variable, put a dollar sign in front of it. You don't have to put a type on it. So you can just define a variable, put whatever you want inside of it. Um, if you want to delete a variable, there's unset. And then I believe string concatenation just uses periods. So if you have two strings, you want to concat them, you put a period between them. I guess apparently you can use plus signs too. Fascinating. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't look how to do functions. Oh, this is going to be a tricky one. Okay. I mean, not tricky. There's just a lot to read here. You're a scientist observing the life cycle of a simple ecosystem composed of rabbits and foxes. You observe that these populations are pretty predictable. After each month, if the rabbit population was over 12 times the fox population, each fox eats three rabbits, then the fox population increases by 20%. Otherwise, each fox eats one rabbit, and the fox population decreases by 10%. I mean, it's, it's going to be a simple solution. It's just cumbersome. So, like, each, each iteration of the, uh, the life cycle. So, after each month, if the temperature ranges between 20 and 35, inclusive, the remaining rabbit population doubles. Otherwise, it decreases by 10%. <laughs> All right. You're given the number of rabbits and foxes, and at some point... Um, uh, at some point, and the temperatures for the in following months. How many rabbits and foxes will be remaining after in months? Oof. Okay, so we're given 
number of rabbits, a thousand, number of foxes, 100, um, and then the number of months, in this case, one month. And then the second line is the temperature at month zero. So the temperature is five. So after one month, a thousand rabbits and a hundred foxes with a temperature of five degrees, we get a result of uh, 800 rabbits and 90, 90 foxes. <laughs> That's fine. All right, here we, here we are in our PHP solution. Um, it reads in the inputs. So, um, yeah, so inputs is going to be... Wait, are we sure that's the temperature? I don't think this is the temperature. I think that's wrong. Oh, never mind. We already read that in. So we already have the number of rabbits, the number of foxes, and the uh, number of months. So they give us a loop that's already going from zero to the number of months. So um, th this actually should be pretty easy. So um, let's just write our if statements here. This, this is what we need to convert into actual code. Okay. Explode. Explode is like split string. All right. After each month, can we get? We can't get wrapping. So after each month, if the rabbit population is over ten or was over twelve times the fox population, each fox eats three rabbits. Then the fox population increases by twenty twenty percent. Otherwise, each fox eats one rabbit, and the fox population increases by 10%. Okay, so... <laughs> if the rabbit population... So if the number of rabbits... Uh, is over 12 times the fox population. So we can do foxes times 12. So if this is the case, then the uh, number of foxes increases by 20%. Um, like that. That should increase by 20%. Otherwise, each fox eats one rabbit. So rabbits... Um, gets decreased by the number of foxes, and the fox population decreases by 10%. So we'll do that. Keep only the integer part. So we need to math dot floor uh, these these this calculation. Um, math. PHP math floor. Um, it's literally just called floor. That's fun. So we'll do floor of this. Floor, floor. Um, after each month, if the temperature ranges between 20 and 35, um, oh, I missed this. Um, if the rabbit population was over 12 times the population, each fox eats three rabbits. So um, we can do three times that. Okay, and then we also have this. If the temperature ranges between 20 and 35, the remaining rabbit population doubles. So if uh, temperature uh, is greater than or equal to 20 and less than or equal to uh, 35, The remaining rabbit population doubles. Otherwise, it decreases by 10%. Now, 
Um, now, how can I output multiple variables? I probably, I don't know if they have times equals. Maybe they do. Um, uh, yeah, this looks good, I think. I don't know if this is going to compile or not. Um, yeah, this looks good. We just need to output a single line with all, all four. So, um, I don't know the best way to do this, except for... Like rabbits plus a space plus foxes. Is that when, what we need to output? Yeah. All right. It broke. A non-numeric value encountered in the answer code. What? Oh, I need a trailing in? Also, we got something completely wrong. It's found 900, expected 800. Can you include a variable in a string like that? Fascinating. Thank you for that, um, Oscar. Yeah, I think doing the pl yeah, I think well doing the plus probably coerced it to like add the two together. That's what it was. Cool. So here's what we learned about PHP. Aside from the dollar signs, it's probably what you already know about programming languages. <laughs> There's not anything too too special, at least for what we tried to do here. Um cool. Nice, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Look at all of you. All all ten of you have hundred percent with PHP. Great work. Uh, let's look at some solutions. So Drunky did it in four minutes. If the number of rabbits is greater than 12 times the number of foxes, then, yeah, so they did do minus equals and times equals. Those are the things that I didn't do, but it's nice that, that that's built into PHP. Yeah, this, this looks exactly like, like exactly the same as my solution. Um, we literally just took the problem description and then gradually turned it into code. And that makes sense, Attila. So basically, whenever I did the plus signs, like the trying to, before I was trying to concat the strings, it was adding those variables together. Like, it, I, I'm, I don't know if they call it coercing in PHP, but because rabbits and foxes were both numbers, it was turning that into a single number rather than outputting two numbers. I get, if I wanted to do that, then I probably would have to do the, the period thing. Cool. All right, let's see if there's any clever solutions. Oscar also did it in PHP. Int val, I guess, is is another thing you could use besides floor. Um, yada dev did also used int val. Ashish use int integer division. Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> now make everyone do Java. We'll see. It's on the list. Yeah, it's there if it pops up. <laughs> uh, Dr. Thu? Um, roughly the same. Yeah, okay, so they just they just did the floor at the end, which makes sense. Cool. And whale? Yep. There's like a little bit of different math we could use. You can see that, like, so if, if, if since it said decrease by 10%, I just multiplied it by 0.9 or increase by 20%, I multiplied it by one, two. There's different math you can use for that. So, um, yeah, rabbits minus rabbit, ra rabbits minus 10% of the rabbits will give you 90%. And then foxes minus 20% of the foxes will give you, or plus 20% of the foxes will be, give you, um, increase by 20%. Yeah. Uh, I, so yeah, they, they did mention drop the decimal, um, so I use floor all over the place. Fractional rabbits. Yeah. Um, yeah, the wheel of languages. Yeah, so this was fun. Thank you, everybody, for... Thank you for giving PHP a chance. It gets a bad rap, but you all gave it a chance, and I appreciate you for that. 
Um, all right, let's do another one. I'm smiling a lot today. My my uh, my cheeks are sore from smiling so much. Here we go. They this thing really wants us to do Python. Easy, easy. Here we go. We're gonna do the next one in Python. Copy the problem description, paste it into the code. Done. <laughs> yeah, Python, um, and, and if you haven't seen these languages before, Python will look very similar to the, the Ruby code we looked at earlier. Um, Python is known for being very readable. And also thing, things, are, things are built in. I think our only option was Python 3, right? Right? We'll do shortest mode in a little bit, but we'll probably do shortest mode with JavaScript, just so everyone has to use the same thing. Dr. Thu says, personally, I don't find Python to be very readable. Yeah, let me reword that. Because here's the thing, <laughs> a lot of Python solutions, people use like list comprehensions and single letter variable names, and um, it can get very terse. But if you use good variable names and you avoid like the weird nested uh, list comprehensions and stuff like that, it's pretty readable. I think like Python, I think like their initial goals were to, to make it closer to English. So. I agree with that, Hanzo. Let's, let's remember to do that. Um, we can literally just paste the problem description in and see see what see what it gives us. Yeah, I think that's the thing, Bob. Is like, it's all indentation instead of um, using curly braces. Let's see, to callers. So this is the problem from earlier. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. So you have a function get prime <laughs> that. gets that specific value from a list and then you have a function get which just gets the zeroth value of the list and then you have replace and swap fascinating it it looks fine <laughs> it looks good it's still it's still pretty crazy cuz you have like uh this here and it's, it also, it would be tricky, like, putting this into the format of Clash of Code because Clash of Code is reading strings from the, 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 the console. Um, so it'd be a, a bit trickier to get it into a variable. Like, I mean, I guess it's possible, but that, even that is a, a challenge that you need to solve is given a bunch of strings, can you turn it into a variable that is this? But, yeah. All right, let's go. Let's write some Python. Honestly, I just want to see what uh, <laughs> what does ChatGPT do. I'll let that run in the background. Okay, uh, Jack has infinitely many decks of cards. One day, he takes some of his decks and decides to arrange the cards from left to right in the following manner. For the first deck, he takes the cards of the suit's hearts, followed by spades, diamonds, and clubs. For the following decks, he decides to order the suits by circularly shifting the suits in the previous deck. So the last suit in the previous deck becomes the first suit in the current deck. That's a, okay. Seems fine. Uh, for example, the order of suits in deck one will be hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs. Then it will be clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Then it will be diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades, etc. Uh, the cards in each suit are arranged in the following order. Two, three, four, five, jack, queen, queen, ace. Cool. So the first 13 cards would be cool. You're given a positive integer in. You're required to print the name of the nth card from the left after Jack arranges his cards. Uh, 
he has multiple decks, I see. So um, basically, you would output this for... <laughs> uh, okay, it's, it's, I mean, this will be doable. Here's the thing. There's probably some some maths you could do to like figure out what is the permutation of I, both of these things going to be given this input. I'm not going to do that. So uh, I'm going to literally calculate every single one until we get to the one that it's asking for. Though it could time out. But uh, here we go. So in is the number. Um, and we start off with hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs. Uh, exclamation mark Discord should get you the, the, the Discord link. Um, did it say less than 10 decks? I didn't see that. 10 to the ninth power. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, that's a tiny little nine right there. Um, so my solution might not actually work without some modulus, but here we go. We have the suits. Um, I'll make all of these strings, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs. All right, so we have our suits. Um, and then we have our cards. So, um, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace. Um, I don't know how to start this problem. I'll give you, I'll give you the starting code. So basically, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I've got the suits and the cards, and then I need to iterate up to n. So we'll need a, a loop that goes up to n. Um. We want Python. Um, how how do we create a loop in Python? This. So uh, we'll say for i in range up to n. So we're going to go from 0 all the way up to n. But we actually want to start at 1. How can we start at 1? Um... Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll just do plus one. Um, I guess I probably could do one to n. Yeah, that's fine. That does it. So that starts at one. Um, and then does it? Is it inclusive? It's not. So n plus one. <laughs> and then that gives us each of the ones. Yeah. So range, start, end, step. Um, Start at 1, end at n plus 1. So now this loop iterates all the way up here. And basically, um, uh, if the current value of i is uh, divisible by 52, meaning we made it to the end of the deck, we then need to shift the suits. Um, so we'll say, uh, if um, i mod 52 is equal to 0, then we need to take the last value in the list, put it at the beginning. Um, so suits equals, I don't know how I could do this, like suits dot pop with the rest of suits. This is how I would do it in JavaScript. So um, let, me, let me figure out how to do this in Python. And there's no curly braces in, 
in JavaScript. So uh, really, I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to do this. Um, so we'll say, um, oh, it it solved it. Jeez, jeez. <laughs> we'll have to look at its code in a little bit. Um, but uh, how do I take the last value of an array and put it at the beginning in Python? Uh, and bloated knickknack. Thank you for the six months. Array dot pop, array dot insert. Hmm. Cool. Um, and then I'll say uh, if i is equal to in Am I going to do a CSS battle today? I feel like those would take me a really long time. We're, we're just going to keep writing code. So uh, if we are at the end then we'll print the current current thing so um we want to print um why is that complaining oh because i need a you need a you need a colon on the end of your if statements yeah print um cards at i mod 52 so that's going to give us the specific card um, of, and then um, the current suit. So the suits, yeah. I am. I have tried uh, Haskell and PHP and Ruby today. Oh, I spun a wheel. I spun a wheel and it landed on Python. So, <laughs> um, all right, we have five minutes and fifty seconds left. Um, we're we're shifting the suit. Um, we could say current suit starts off as suits. At zero. Well, I guess we'll we'll just do this. Um and um if the um cards dot length um if i mod the cards dot length is equal to 0 so if if we've um uh, well, I'll have to figure out how to get the length of the list but if we have done all of the ones so we got up to ace then now the current suit would um, be incremented. Length is what I want. Cool. Um. That should be fine. <laughs> now I can just say suits at um, current suit modulus four.
List index out of range. Dang, I was so close. Okay, so I have three minutes less. I'm close. So on the simple cases, I get it. And so these simple cases are um, 53, which is going to be the next one, and then 62. 104 is wrong. Um, line 16, it's out of index. I think I need to... Do I need to do for mod the current suit? Oh, current suit plus one. Mm, no, current suit. Yeah, let's figure out where our index out of range is. Yeah, it's there. Um... Oh, yeah, so I have to do I minus one. So actually, I really, I actually really want to do this. I do want to go from zero up until the end. Um, um, yeah. Or not. One suit has 13 cards. Whole deck has 52 cards. I have all of them there. Okay, we have a minute left. Line 11 is messing with things. Length of cards, minus one. Regarding this, yeah, what 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 would be wrong? Is it fifty two mod I? Oh. You're totally right. Yeah, okay, good call. Good call, Mihai and uh, Kirby on tour. Um, yeah, 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 because it's it's not the total number of cards in the deck. It's like currently what I is. And then uh, we fail because this is not an optimized solution because it literally has to iterate all of the way. I'm okay with that. We should at least get some percentage right because um, it's going to time out for some of the other ones. And then we can look and see how people did maths. Yeah, you all, you all had it. Thank you. I missed that. Um, so what did I get? Uh, I got a seventy-seven percent. So when when the number gets really big, my code times out because it literally has to iterate all the way up to the number. Um, there is a optimized way to do this where you don't have to iterate up, but I don't know how to figure that out. Let's see if someone else figured it out. <laughs> The reason I iterate all the way is like I don't know how to calculate like how do I calculate what the value is going to be here based on in. Um do I just just I guess it's just in. Do I just do in mod 13? But then I also need to figure out what the current suit is. Huh. Is with this yeah, this would just be in mod 13 in minus 1 mod 13, wouldn't it be? Um Um, <laughs> well, no one, if you, if you got 88% with the fourth, oh, you're, uh, no, so Fun Planet got, or, um, in plus one mod 13. Yeah, but then we'd be figuring out the current number of seats, what the current suit is. That's the tricky part. Cool. 
Um, yeah, so people were still submitting, which is why why we got here. But let's see how Whale did it. Everyone's everyone say yeah. So this is the maths. This is the maths that uh, I did not know how to do, uh, or like bit shifting. So uh, first of all, they create a list of all this the uh, specific um, uh, suits and the the cards, and then. Um, they're going from zero up to three, so zero, one, two. And then our output what's going on here? We need to look for we need to look up a couple of things. So my guess is that this makes a copy of the array. Uh, any, any, any Python people in the chat? What is this colon inside of a list doing? Return the list index from one to three. Yeah, so if you don't pass anything in, then you're just going to get a copy. Yeah, so that it basically it, it slices the list with it's a copy of the list. Yeah, so copy the list. Now, this says um, tilde i. So what is tilde? This is like bit shifting. The tilde operator in Python. A unary operator. Bitwise complement operator. Uh, Degramic, thank you for the prime. So, uh, tilde of x minus 1. Fascinating. So, tilde of 0 is going to be negative 1. So, this says uh, slice the array with negative 1 on the first iteration. And, oh, I get it. They are, they are creating a list of every possible permutation of uh, suits. That's what's happening here. <laughs> I was like, what, what's happening? So all this does is it creates a list that has hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, and then clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, and then um, diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades, and then spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts. <laughs> so that's all this is doing. That's basically it's creating every possible version of the permutation of uh, suits. Okay, so now that we have that, then comes the maths. Then comes the maths. Um, so n is the total number, and we're doing floor division of thirteen. So the slash slash in Python uh, is integer integer division, which means it drops the decimal. So Take our input number, divide it by 13. That's going to be uh, basically the number of suits that we go through, right? Because um, in our case, like the first example, n was 53. So 53 divided by 13 is going to be 4. So we've gone through uh, four suits, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, because we went through the first four. And so then... Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So it tells, basically tells us what, what suit we're, we're, yeah, what suit we're going to be on. Yeah. So then we output, um, just the input number mod 13, because that will be, you take this, even if you have like 10,000, if you, if you take the, the remainder of the division of 13, it's going to give you the specific one. But then this is going to give you what suit we're on. Woo! Well, that... <laughs> you did it, Well, That's really good. Are you in the chat, Well, I, I don't know if I saw messages from you. Um, th this was clever. I mean, this took a little bit of figuring out. Um, but but th this, this got it for us because this is basically slicing the array negative 1 to negative 1 on the end and then negative 2 to negative 2. Fascinating. Um, question is why split instead of creating an array? Oh, 
because it's easier to type. Maybe. I feel like they had to type this out manually. Um, whew, that was fun. We learned a little bit, though. <laughs> All right, let's see how Oscar did it in Python. Um, deck, position, suit, card. Cool. So they, they, uh, Oscar did it without creating all the permutations of the suits. <sighs> did ChatGPT do this? <laughs> um, this gives us the deck number that we're in. This gives us the position in that deck. Um, the suit will be the position in the deck divided by 13. And then I think this just handles because we start at zero. And then the specific card is just going to be that. Yeah, so this is basically how you calculate. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, I didn't make coding game. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just playing it. Um, so the challenge was you have an, an infinite number of decks stacked back to back, and each one is sorted in a given way. So it starts off where the first deck is, start, is sorted hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs in the correct order. So two of hearts, two of, two of, three of hearts, four of hearts, etc. The second deck in this infinite list is going to be sorted clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. And then the one after that is going to be sorted... Uh, diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades, and then the one after that is going to be sorted spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts, and then it repeats. It'll be sorted hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs. So we have an infinite number of decks. Each one is sorted slightly differently. So uh, that's why they created uh, an array that has all the different kinds of ways that you could sort the suits. Um, yeah, but in this case, uh, we just calculate what that suit is going to be without needing to create the permutations. It just required some maths, which I still don't understand. <laughs> I kind of get the maths, but I still kind of don't get the maths. Cool. All right. Junkie did it in Python. Let's see how they did it. Fascinating. So, yeah, I mean, Junkie is a speed coder, right? Like, they just copied it from the description, and they're like, all right, we're just going to parse this out. <laughs> we're just going to copy it from the problem description, split on commas, and then just get these things because I don't feel like I don't feel like manually writing out or manually typing out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. Um, <laughs> they did the same thing here. So this gives us all of the permutations. So they just pasted the solution in and then extracted out the lists of permutations. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. And then how did we solve it? Uh, they figured out the math. They figured out the math here. So the suit is in floor division of 13 mod 16. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, I didn't think about this, but um, you could create a single list of all of the suits. So you have a single list with hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades, spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs. And that is length 16. Um... So you have a you have a list of all the yeah that that makes that makes it a lot easier to wrap your mind around how how you how you mod or how you rotate through that. Yeah. Six a length 16 are all of the possible number of suits. Cool. Uh what did you use capital at? Did you even use this drunkie? <laughs> I think you I think you got a leftover variable here. Um because we get the specific suit, and then we get the specific, uh, no, we get the specific card and the specific suit. Yeah, this is, that's just left over. Fascinating. Drunky absolutely is a speed coder, though, so you can tell they, they, they didn't want to manually type things out. They just copied the problem description in and then wrote a parser, which is apparently for them is faster than, uh, faster than just, just writing out the things that they need. And then we've seen this in their solutions several times. They have a bunch of helper functions because sometimes the solutions call for these helper functions so they can use those helper functions. Um, fascinating. 16 times 13 is 208. That was the number you were talking about. Oh, so I guess you could create 
a, a deck of 208 cards, and now you know that that deck of 208 cards actually repeats itself over and over infinitely. I see. That would have been an optimization. Let's see how Thomas did it. Yeah, so they, they, they wrote out the things. Um, I, I don't know if I have the brain power to figure this out, just because I've been figuring out so much code so far. Are you able to see the code if you're not playing? I don't know. If you click this link, you might be able to. <sighs> maths maths we haven't seen but i don't feel like explaining it uh <laughs> if n is equal to this ace of hearts <laughs> did fun no fun planet got 88 percent. that's fascinating um so uh <laughs> Wait, how did they get an 88% with, without any looping? You originally did it using a simple for loop and then optimize each step of it one by one. I see, I see. Yeah, I think they, I think they coded to the tests and somehow it worked. Um, all right, uh, Alphatron. Yeah, they got us 88%. Same thing. But the math was just like slightly wrong. And then... Uh, yeah, uh, Bulate did, did the same thing that I did, I think. Um, oh, yeah, but th there's is a simpler solution because it's basically... Uh, we just rotate the types until we get to the specific card... Oh no no and they're no they have they're rotating the types but they're building up a list of every possible card um which times out just like my solution like I'm not putting it into an, a list I'm just only printing it if we get there but this is this is why my my solution times out is I'm not doing any any special math I'm literally calculating every single card um and then uh, <laughs> and printing it out. But it times out, which is why I only got 77%. Uh, and then Yada's timed out. or Yeah, it didn't account for all of the cases. Okay. Um, this is fun. And my, my face hurts. I, I feel like I'm smiling a lot. I don't know why. But actually, okay, yeah, before we, before we move on, let's see how ChatGPT decided to do it. So um, here we go. Let's write a Python function to do this. Suits. Deck. While n is greater than 13. Yeah, so this is cool. They're figuring out what the deck is and what the card number is um, first. Yeah, so like this, is, this, this will not time out because it's just a simple iteration, I think, a simple iteration up to n. Hope my, this probably wouldn't time out, I don't think. Um, and then... <laughs> Okay, now that this is where it gets tricky. They change the suit order based on the deck. And then we have some like weird slicing stuff here. So uh, they're basically turning this array into the array that will exist for the given deck. It's reordering those suits. But here's the thing. I think I feel like it's just uh Yeah, so it's grabbing what the what it should start as. Yeah, so this is this is this kind of the same thing as like almost the same as like pop and put it in unshifted or like put it at the beginning. Um um So basically they figure out what the first suit in the in the list is going to be and then they put everything else after that. Weird. Okay. Uh, then we have the card name. Oh, that's a nice optimization. <laughs> um, wait, 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 wait. 
This is wrong. This is wrong. Right? How is it supposed to know the card number? Do we use in anywhere? What's the best, excuse me, what's the best Python playground? Repl it? I have Python in my terminal? It's not that easy. I guess, I guess I could, I could run, I could run the code locally. Uh, we'll click this first one, see what happens. Do they have dark mode? Hmm. It only it only accounted for the suits. Um This is this is just wrong. This is just really wrong. <laughs> oh, cuz yeah, it only accounted for ace jack queen king. It didn't account for, yeah, it, it understand the logic understood the logic wrong. Oh yeah, and it shows us the example right here. Yeah, we could have fine tuned it. We could have been like, "Hey, can you include um in my prompt before this? Well, for your solution to my prompt before this, can you include all the other cards in the deck too?" I spelled two wrong. I mean, this is one way to go about it. Um, to put it all into the deck like this. <laughs> uh, uh, here's the thing. If it... Okay, okay. Loop through the decks and reorder the suits. My goodness. <laughs> My goodness. Print out the nth card. Uh, okay. Example value of in. Eight of spades? <laughs> That's not right. Delete line. Oh, yeah, I got rid of that. Fifty three should be two of uh, something. <sighs> wow. Going to the league with the big... What's, what's the league? What do you mean by that? Yeah, see you later, Doctor. You thank, thank you for your, your solutions. You had some cool ones. Appreciate you. And uh, enjoy that haircut. All right. Chat GPT had an issue with that. Uh, we, we probably just need to reword the question a bit. To get it right. All right. Uh, I've been coding for two hours at this point. Let's take a break, but I will let you preview the language we're going to use after the break. Uh, um... Rust. That's fun. People like Rust. So after the break, we're going to do this again, but with Rust. It's just no. <laughs> uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a, like a 10 minute break. Time to learn Rust. Yeah. Um, what what uh, what should we do during the break? Should we open Pokemon cards? Should we? Uh, Color Europe. I have, a, I have a coloring book of Europe. Should we meditate? You have two minutes to vote. And we could watch a YouTube video. Um.
And Hikari, thank you for the uh thank you for the raid. We're actually just about to go on a break, but honestly, um we'll uh <laughs> we'll do another clash uh before we go on break. What were you working on? Um a more versatile LS Yomi. I have no idea what this is. A tool to list devices in Iomu groups? I don't know what an Iomu group is. Cool. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. Um, oh, yeah, we could, we could have done city guessing, too. But, yeah, thank you for the raid. Welcome in, raiders. Uh, we actually were playing Clash of Code. Let's actually, let's do this. Let's do fastest, um... No, let's do reverse mode. Reverse mode is usually a little bit easier. Um, I think maybe it's maybe not. I guess it depends. But here, here's a, here's Clash of Code. So GPU pass through for virtual machines. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Well, welcome in. Thank you for the raid. Uh, we're going to play this. So um, if you click that link and then join, you'll be dropped into this room. And then whenever it starts, we're going to be given a prompt. It's going to have example inputs and outputs, and we have to figure out what code to write based on those inputs and outputs. And the first person to finish wins. Wins. And you can use any language you want. Uh, earlier, I've been uh, spinning the wheel every time to figure, figure out what language we use. Last, last one was Python. The one before that was um, PHP. Before that was Ruby. And before that was Haskell. We didn't figure out Haskell, though. Haskell is really hard. But this next one, we're going to use Rust after this one. This one is any language you want. Um, cool. We'll do, we'll, do, we'll do a coloring book of Europe when we go on break. Uh, is Whale going to win again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah you, have, yeah, you don't have to participate. You can just watch if you want to as well. And what I like to do is whenever the, uh, whenever the, the thing is over, I like to go through all of the solutions and try and explain what's happening in all of them. So let's get into it. Uh, hopefully this is a quick one, but reverse mode is different. So there's no problem description. You literally just get inputs and outputs. Yeah. So example inputs, example output, example input, example output. Uh, and you need to figure out what code to write. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use JavaScript for this. That's my, that's the language I'm most comfortable with. And also we can look at their example code to see what they do. So um, oh, I see. It, so they give us the number of complete words that we're going to see. And then they give us the number of incomplete words that we're going to see. And we need to output a, all of the words that, are in, that match incomplete. Fascinating. Okay. So we read in all of the completed words. Um, I'm going to push that into an array. Yeah, the closest match. So completed is going to be a list. And then for every completed word, we push in the uh, completed word. And then as we come across each incomplete word, I want to turn the incomplete one into a regular expression and see if it matches any of the complete words. So... Uh, I'm going to do something like completed words. We're going to find each word, and we're going to say the incomplete word um, replace. Well, I guess we'll create a regular expression out of it. We could create the Levenstein dist distance, but I think the, the underscores are just missing letters. Yeah, they're just missing letters. So I'm just going to create a regular expression. Um, and it will be all of the underscores replaced with dot star. That's that. And then, um, should be able to do this and then we'll print that. Nice. Got it. Oh, I only got 75%. Oh, I should have let it complete. <sighs> oh, well. 
I was missing something. <laughs> it's possible that it did, maybe they all were it all just underscores. Man, man, I was feeling really good about that one. Uh, Yada Dev, if you want to click share, we can look at your code. All right, I'm going to set a, a two minute timer before we look at the solutions. So you all get a chance to, to submit. Two underscores? Dot star, dot star. Oof. Maybe I didn't handle that. Yeah. Would that match, though? Like... Yeah, that matches. Dot star match, ma means uh, anything. Did I use? Oh, I have dot star. So it also match for world. Yeah, it matches what it, whichever one's the first one in my solution. I think there's it's possible there's more than one missing character though. Nice job, Purple Dre. Yeah. All right. Let's look at Wells' solution. Read in all of the completed words, put them into the array R. Good. So far, similar to my solution. Now, um, read in the incomplete word. <laughs> this nonsense. Um, should have used period, not period star. Yeah, probably, because that period means match anything, and period star means match zero or more of anything. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, that, okay. You're finding the match with the most, the most matching characters. Cool. Yeah, that, that also makes sense. So you basically... Um, I don't know what the zip function does. I guess that turns it into like a dictionary. Let's look at zip. Um, Python zip. What is it? Did I, did I say this nonsense? <laughs> I mean, I didn't, it's just, it's going to take a second to, um, uh, expand what this is actually doing at first glance and especially by just seeing the word max by i think what it's doing is it's uh counting the number of occurrences of every letter in one word and the number of occurrences of every letter in the other word and whichever one has the most similar number of occurrences is the match i think is what they're trying to do here um I think, is this a string zip or an array zip? Oh, it works on anything. So any iterable, iter, iterable. Um, was it Ruby? Oh, it is Ruby. Never mind. Never mind. Um, A dot zip. Oh, that it's like a zipper. I see. So you have two words, and you're taking the first letter of each word, putting it into a tuple, a tuple, 
and then the second letter of each word putting it into a tuple and the third letter and putting a uh, letter and putting it into a tuple and the fourth and putting it into a tuple and now you have a bunch of tuples of all the letters of each word and you want to find the one that um has the most yeah so count the most where the two characters are equal to each other and they get the max one that's it <laughs> Oh, okay, but that that I, I like that. Yeah, so that makes sense without using a regular expression. You're basically so for example, if we had uh, World and then we wanted to zip that against W O R D like this. So this would give us back um, a list with W and W and be a list of lists and then we have another one which is W or sorry, O and O, etc. Keep on going. So every single one, and then you would also have L and underscore. So the number of matching characters here would be four. Uh, and then if you compared that, for instance, against like some other one, like uh, underscore underscore C, then uh, it would only ha it would have zero matching characters. Cool. That's a cool solution. Well, good job. Uh, Purple Dre did it with Rust. Let's see how they did it. So, uh, words are all of the completed words. And then they're going to read in every line to grab the incomplete word. Um, and then, yeah, so, I mean, this is my one mistake. I did dot star instead of dot. But this is a very similar solution that I did, but they just did it in Rust, where they take the incomplete word, replace the underscores with dots, and then use it as a regular expression. Oof. What's up, DMD? Welcome in. Oof. Um, Binary Brewer did it with Python. Yeah, this, this is a bit more manual, but basically we're looking at every other word. So um, read in all of the completed words. And then for all of the completed words, we're going to be comparing it against the given incomplete word. Um. And if the length is not the same, we shouldn't even compare them. We're going to assume that they match. Um, and they did the zipping thing. So now we have two. Um, we have a, a list, a list of tuples. And if that character is not equal to underscore and they don't equal each other, then it's not a match. Yeah, so they're basically looking at it one by one. And if it's not an underscore, they have to equal each other. But if it is an underscore, they can skip it. But if uh, uh, there were only underscores and everything else matched, then it's a valid word. Cool. Yeah. So I, I think we have a lot of varying uh, ways people have learned uh, Jimmy So, I mean, I can do a quick poll to see in the chat. But uh, personally, I, I have a computer science degree. Um, and uh, But also free time. <laughs> Um, so I'll just say degree, self-taught, boot camp. Is there anything else I should put in this list? Um, and I would say choose in the order that you actually did because technically I'm, I'm also pretty much every programmer is self-taught. Like after you learn a certain amount, you're teaching yourself stuff, but uh, the basis of my understanding definitely came from my degree. I guess not. I mean, I also kind of learned to program before I even got my degree. Um, could have gone to a coding boot camp. Could be completely self-taught. Uh, I think this covers most things, right? <laughs> born, born with it. But yeah, this is how you should answer. If you have a computer science degree or software engineering degree, just mark degree. Even, even if you are self-taught, um, yeah, self-taught would be you've never you've never had any formal schooling. You've never gone to a class on programming or a boot camp on it. You basically use so ev even using online courses and online things, I would still consider that self-taught if it's not like a full degree program. Um, college degree, full college degree, dropout college degree. Because <laughs> also, honestly, this is also an option like. Um, uh, self-taught. 
because a lot of people might have gotten like two years of schooling, but honestly, you have enough to where uh, you could <laughs> you could teach yourself. Um, but yeah, self-taught is uh, you, you watch courses online, you watch Twitch streams, YouTube videos, you read articles, but you've never been to any actual formal schooling for it. All right. You have two minutes to vote. We can see what 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 make what the chat is made up of. <laughs> yeah, self-taught is watching videos, reading documentation. Yeah, if that's the only thing you do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I actually updated them very recently, so um, you can check them out. So I have the Express API starter and the Express API starter uh, TypeScript. Uh, these are two two templates you could possibly use, and then I have a I have a CLI tool that will uh, auto clone them. If you look on the in the README, it tells you how you can use the use the template. So yeah, I have a I have a full college degree. Yeah, but see that's the thing. Yeah, I didn't learn JavaScript in my degree. I I taught myself JavaScript, but I got a degree. Uh, and I learned Java, C++, C, bash scripting. Uh, that's kind of it. Maybe there are a few, I guess like SQL. But um, I got a job because I was a, because I had a degree. Not because, I not necessarily because of the programming I knew how to write, I guess. Pick two? What do you mean? No, you can't pick uh, the polls are like uh, one only. So it's it's a pretty good mix, right? So 38% of the people that completed this have a degree. 14% dropped out. 6% uh, went to a boot camp, and then 42% are self-taught. So yeah, yeah, there's there's quite a large number of people in here that that taught themselves to code. Yeah. <laughs> See, I guess I mean I, I I have a similar path because like I was I was learning PHP and JavaScript and ActionScript before I ever got my degree, but I still have a degree. I don't know. I, I think the thing is like most most you you kind of have to be self taught regardless of if you actually went to school for it or not. Yeah. Dropped out, went to a boot camp, then taught myself. So yeah, you you satisfy multiple of these. Yeah. <laughs> Does being in cybersecurity count? Yeah, I think so. Self-taught before college, went to college so I could potentially get a good job and more experience or internships. Yeah, same, I'm in the same boat. Cool. All right, we're going to take a break now. Uh, so for anybody that was here and you're leaving, you're not going to come back, thank you so much for playing. It was super fun to to look at people's solutions here. Uh, definitely definitely check out my my stream schedule. We, we do this kind of stream like once every... Um, two weeks or so, at least I'm trying to lately. And then today is fun because we get to choose other pro use other programming languages. Uh, but definitely, definitely check out the schedule, follow me over on YouTube, um, or just stick around because in about 10 minutes, we're, we're going to keep doing more. Uh, self by, self taught by passion, 20 years of learning. Nice sliders. Glad to hear it. No matter the learning path, you always end up self taught. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly it. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, uh, here's the thing. If you got injected with JavaScript knowledge, then um, they've also probably implanted false memories of how you got that JavaScript knowledge, right? Right? <laughs> right. All right, let's take a break. Uh, Test. Test, test. Ooh, I need to adjust this camera. Give me a second.
Hmm. First, uh, uh, a <laughs> little advertisement for these stickers. I mean, they're not for sale yet, but they're going to be for sale soon. I'm going to have these uh, brushed gold JavaScript prismatic TypeScript and then um, all of these glitter glitter frameworks. These are going to be for sale uh, pretty soon. So if you join the mailing list, you'll be the first to know when these go on sale. <clears throat> Looking for a data table in View 3. Uh, check out tan stack table i personally haven't used it but it does say that it has uh uh support for it for view three and then there's also one i think it's literally called view data table here we go we're going to color a map an atlas of the world any tips on getting better at algorithms practice um or avoid job interviews that ask you about algorithms because <laughs> they're I mean depending on the kind of job that you're getting oh no this is this is South America we're gonna do uh Europe yeah yeah I, I mainly do uh like like full stack web dev all right na name a name a country in Europe in the chat and I will color it in right now. Greece. All right. It's time to learn where Greece is. Greece is right here. Yeah, we can do multiple because there are... Um... Greece is small. Greece is small. Turn some music on. Oh yeah, Hyperplexed is great. I don't think he's underrated. I think he has like over 300,000 subs, doesn't he? I mean, he's he's newer. I think like I've only seen his videos like in the last year. I don't know how long he's been around, but uh, his stuff is like really well produced, which makes sense why he has so many subscribers. And I mean, and, and it's good. It's 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 uh, informative and entertaining. That's all you could ask for in a coding YouTube channel. I'm referring to a map. <laughs> this side. I, so the whole reason I'm doing this is I'm really bad at European geography, so I wanna I wanna get better at it. Oh, thank you, Mordecai. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, what what name another country? First one, first we're first one to mention it. I will do it. Montenegro is that Europe? Spain? We'll do Spain. I'll have to look up where Montenegro is. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I'm looking on the map. I don't see it. We'll do Spain. It's next to Croatia. Hmm. Must be too small to label. Or, like, yeah. Too small to label.
What do you mean, Oscar? Make mod swords and sell? What, what, what do you mean by that? Like physical mod swords? Oh! Twitch sticker pack would be cool, huh? Shiny Twitch sticker pack. Man, I could start a whole shiny sticker business. Okay, I didn't realize it, but Spain is uh it's in between <laughs> this this is spain right here is this not art <laughs> is this not art i have color pencils what other category do you use color pencils in on twitch This little buddy. Okay. Is that Crete? Is that is that am I saying that right? I've been to Europe, yep. And uh, I'm going again in June. In June, I'll be in Amsterdam for uh, JS Nation. I've been to Spain. I've been to Mallorca, Spain. Which is that? Is that this little island? Or is Mallorca on the mainland? Um, I've been to. Uh, I've lived in Germany. So I've been to quite a few places. Place uh, places in Germany. Um, and I've lived in England. And I've visited France. Which is that one, apparently. <laughs> I've been I've been to Disneyland Paris. I've been to the top of the Eiffel Tower. I'm really bad at coloring this this piece here. It's on the it's on the edge. So I, I grew up a, mili a military kid, so I grew up, I lived in Germany for three years, I lived in England for three years, and then while we were living in, in England, we visited Mallorca, or sorry, when we were living in Germany, I keep, I'm basically pointing at Germany, <laughs> we visited Mallorca, Spain, and when I was living in England, we visited France, uh, but both places I lived there for three years. Uh, and I think both places, the, 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 base that my father was stationed at uh they don't exist anymore i'm pretty sure they both got closed down uh and the timmy thank you for the reset all right one more while we're on this break what's the next one that i should do norway yeah we should close it out with norway good call I still don't know where, but did I? Is one of these Montenegro? I'll have to look on a, like a proper map. I have painted a country between France and Spain. Oh, 
Andorra. <laughs> Well, here's the nice thing. These are actually, uh, uh, these are, this is erasable. Yeah, it's teeny tiny. Look at that little, look at that little Andorra right there. Didn't see it. In the, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you do it that way, it's going to take a long time. I can't, I can't, I can't do that. the Balkan area I don't know where that is like here Can you tell me where Montenegro is supposed to be? I think it's just too small to label. Uh, I don't know. I don't compiler TV. Uh, I mean, do I? Most, most everyone I know is like US based. But I have a lot of viewers that are all over the world. Southwest of Serbia? This one, the little blue one? Or this little blue one? Below or to the... There's two little blue ones. Or is that the same country just separated by... <laughs> separated by another country? Light blue on the coast. Cool. So there's Montenegro. Right there. And I'm doing this just rough because uh, there's a lot of little islands in here. Pixel perfect precision? No, no thanks. <laughs> I already know that this is rough. Cool, we did it. We got Spain, Greece, and we learned that this was 
Don't tell me. Crete? Is this Crete? Uh, also, there's Andorra, which is this little little thing right here between Spain and France. And then we colored Norway. Great work, everyone. Yes, yes. <laughs> and again, look at these cool stickers that are going to be coming out soon. Uh, got all the glitter frameworks. Wait, where'd view, to view go? Glitter frameworks. Gold JS. Prismatic TypeScript and JavaScript. Uh, those are going to go on sale soon, so uh, sign up for the mailing list <laughs> if you want to be notified about the about these uh, those stickers. How am I not getting sued for something? <laughs> okay, so the JavaScript logo is Creative Commons zero, no attribution. Um, the TypeScript logo is also um, same thing because it's not based on the one from Microsoft. And then all of the others, I think I've changed them enough and they're not using the original colors that, that you could argue, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's write some more code. Probably only gonna do this for like another 30, 30 seconds. Or not 30, 30 minutes. Um, and then, uh, then we'll get we'll uh, we'll get out of here. But we're about to write some Rust code, uh, which should be fun. Thirty second coding. What's up, Alka? I just saw you in the chat. No, but here we go. We have to, we're going to use Rust. And um, we'll do fastest mode. So you can only use Rust. Now is your chance to learn Rust. Um, and what I, what I know about Rust is it's very explicit. Like, if you're going to be... Modifying a variable, you have to say that it's mutable. Um, it's also uh, statically typed, so there's like no weird typings or anything like that. Um, and then let's just pull up their documentation. So if you want to learn more about Rust, um, check that. Um, and then we can look at the, <laughs> read a book? No, we, we, we want to learn it as fast as possible. Check out Rust by example. That could be useful. Um, did I post the wrong link? Yes, I did. Yeah, that's just the YouTube chat is all that is. So. Oh, did I not paste? I didn't even paste the clash yet. I'm sorry. Yeah, Here, here's how you can get into the clash. an immutable view into a vector or array. A tuple, a fixed size set of values, possibly a different types. Oh, fascinating. Destructuring. Oh, destructuring with parentheses. Structs. 
a struct with unnamed fields called a tuple struct. Oh yeah, so it just has like two values inside of it. Uh, you don't you, without a name. Fascinating. Yeah, so a struct is like a type or an interface. Okay. Okay. Only eleven people are gonna try Rust. <clears throat> now's your chance. Now's your chance to say that you 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 coded in Rust. <laughs> Lucky we found eleven. I mean, <laughs> my Rust is a bit rusty. Well, I've only written Rust like twice, and it was very little. Rust is a, a programming language, a low-level programming language. There's a dark mode? Oh, nice call, Alka. That's a nice dark theme, too. Uh, Rust is a, is a game, too, but it's also a low-level programming language that um, is is nice. <laughs> they, they learned a lot from all of the past programming languages and such, um, and a lot of people are choosing Rust instead of even, like, C++ because... It's low level like C++, but it has a lot of nice things in it that make it uh, less error prone or, or, or bug prone. Yeah. But I guess that's the other thing. Yeah, like Rust is very um, uh, hot right now. A lot of people are talking about Rust. Uh, did Mozilla make Rust? Uh, I know that some of Firefox is written in Rust. Mozilla join, is thrilled to join the Rust community announcing the formation of the Rust Foundation. Oh, we're starting. We're starting. It's time. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> uh, the Rust language was uh, developed by Graydon Hoare. Cool. All right. Left-hand side has the problem description, which is going to have some exclusive or... Right-hand side, uh, the code. Now, this is nice because it's at least set up reading of the inputs for us. So you can see, like, the example input is three, three lines or potentially multiple lines. So first line is going to say how many lines you need to read in. Then you have all of those lines. Okay, you're given a list of strings. Print the sorted list of strings based on their... XOR score from lowest to highest. The XOR score of a string is the bitwise exclusive OR aggregation of the ASCII values of all its characters. In the case of ties, revert to lexicographical order between the tied strings. So for example, um, cat, 99 exclusive OR 97, exclusive OR 116. Wait, what? No, 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 no. no oh, okay. So the three ASCII codes for CAT are 99, 97, and 116. We exclusive or all of those. Or no, no, we we create the binary representation and exclusive or all of those, and then that gives us back. Um, this is like cut off. Can I? Okay. Um, we exclusive or all the binary representations. That gives us that, and then we get the uh, the decimal version of that. Um, binary representation. Okay, so step number one is get the ASCII character code of every character in the str in the string. And in the code, so if you look at the code on the right hand side that they gave us, line eighteen is going to be that one, uh, one that one specific word that you get. You need to get all of the ASCII codes for. So um, if I print out S here, that should be. Um, the string itself. Format argument must be a string literal. Sick. Sick. You know what's also cool about Rust? Are its error messages. Its error messages literally told me how to write Rust code. Look at this. So I, I tried to just output the string standalone, and it's like, hey, you probably want to do this instead. 
So that's cool. <laughs> So that, that outputs the string, and, and I have that right. So S is going to be each one of the strings. So now what you need to do is uh, take that string and get the ASCII character value of each one. So what I'm going to search for is Rust iterate over characters in a string. Um, how do you iterate over a string character by character? Well, that seems easy. Is this Rust? Is this answer for Rust? Yeah, they tagged it as Rust. Boom. <laughs> so s.chars, uh, and now we can try to print out each character. So nice, we're on the way. All right, so now that we have the character, uh, we want to convert it to the ASCII code. So Rust convert char to ASCII. Yeah, you can absolutely Google, and especially because I, I don't program in Rust, so um, I need to figure out how to program in Rust. And you'll notice I'm not I'm not just plugging this question into Google, right? I'm solving tiny little steps of the problem one by one that are general problems. So like convert ASCII um, convert to the ASCII code. Key dot two ASCII. Well, I don't want lowercase. I just want the actual ASCII. Oh no, yeah, yeah, you can tap out all you want. Yeah. Um, what if I just try to convert a, ch a char to um, an integer? Rust char to int. No, not that. Casting. Could I do this as you ate? Yes, yes I can. <laughs> so that gives me 99, 97, 116, 68, 79, 71. Cool. So um, that gives me um, the uh, ASCII. Um, so now that I have the ASCII, I need to convert it into binary. Uh, Rust uh, U8 to binary string. Actually, do I even need to convert it to binary? Yeah, U32 would make sense. So th these are just different sized integers. So 32 is like is going to be the biggest sized one. Um, this should still work. Number to binary? Um, decimal to binary in Rust. Here's the thing. Do I actually need to convert it to binary? Rust XOR numbers. Exclusive or numbers in Rust. It's just the hat. We just had it. So I could do something like um, result, which is um, result starts off as the first character in the string. Um, so if I do s dot chars at zero? Does that work? How do I get the zeroth index? Um, I get, maybe this gives us an iterator. We need to convert it to a list. Um, Rust, convert string to array of 
characters. Oh, without chars, then that literally just gives me back the char. Um, string cannot be indexed by integer. Um, dot collect. So first we can put it into a vector and we've got six minutes left. Um, and then how do I grab the specific index of a value? I guess I don't really even want to do that. What, 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 what was I trying to do right now? Oh yeah, I, I want to do exclusive or all of these things together. Um, I wonder if they have a reduce. Because the, the tricky part is I want to grab the first one and then um, uh, exclusive or with, with the previous ones before it. Yeah, so if I, if I did something like this, um, chars dot collect dot reduce. I think maybe I just do chars dot reduce. Cool. Um, and then. A is going to be a U32, because that's our accumulator. Um, and I guess I could, if I, if I map all of the characters, um, if I map all of the characters to U32, to so uh, map, um, character, character as you 32. Use fold. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then do you give fold like an initial value? We've got four minutes left. Um, and for this map, how do I write that? I want to map. Rust, convert string to array of u32 uh pipe around c maybe Collect the cars, the chars. Um, oh, do I do that inside of collect? Basically, I want to go from a list of characters to a list of U32, U32 or U8. Um,
This is closer to what I want. Um. Did you mean X? I only got two minutes left. This is this is not looking good. Basically, I got stuck on converting a list of characters to a list of uh, integers. Um, Need to name the type. Um, but what what is this going to give me back, though? <laughs> I don't I don't know what the type is. Can it infer that type based on the the right hand side? Is that really all I want? Is as bytes? And then we could fold that. Is there, where did we learn about fold? Some a vector using fold. Iter, fold. I only got 15 seconds left, but, um, just let me keep coding coding game. <laughs> like, <God. laughs> I wish we could set, like, well, I guess if there was no time limit, then there'd be no point. But, uh, <laughs> I, I was, I don't even know if I was on the right track, but basically what I thought I would do is I was, a ha I would have the list of, um, characters as their ASCII codes and then fold that using, um, the exclusive or operator instead of plus equals. Um... Oof. Oof. Yeah, so like... Fold is a form of reduce, yeah. Yeah. All right, so Mordecai did it in Rust in 2 minutes 48 seconds. Let's see how they did it. So, um, they read in all of the strings, and then now they sorted them after reading them all in. Cool. And then the um, XOR score, they implemented a function for that. This is what I, yeah, this, I almost, I almost got there, right? So I did, I did, instead of calling it accumulator, I called it sum and sum hat. And then, oh, I see. I was missing that part there. So, um, I, I got really close to this based on that stack overflow that I just looked at. <laughs> but fold, folding a list of, of things, um, Cool. But th this this was it. So basically, take all of the characters as bytes in the string and then exclusive or them against each other. And so that gives you the exclusive or score. It is interesting to see that this function doesn't have a return statement. I guess it's just a return of whatever the last line is. Um, oh, you had you had ChatGPT do it, yeah. And then. Uh, we calculate their scores. If they're equal, then we just do a regular string comparison. Uh, but if they're not equal, then we do a comparison of the two. Cool. Cool. 
Oh, you see, you return if there's no semicolon. Fascinating. Fascinating. All right, let's see how Purple Dre did it. There we go. There they go doing using fold. Previous current. This seems a lot simpler, though. You don't have to cast current because you have the bytes, I guess. Yeah, so they calculate the exclusive or of every every string, put that into a list, and then sort it. Wait, are you saying the built-in sort just works? <laughs> Uh, and int82, thank you for the prime. That's a great Twitch name. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for the support. Um, yeah, no worries, Mordecai. I mean, you 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 got it. I think how fast how fast did you do it? Yeah, you beat you beat even Purple Dre by almost two minutes. Um, but this is fascinating. So tell me if if I'm if I'm understanding this right. We create a list of tuples, and each of those tuples has the exclusive or value and the string. So when we call the built-in sort, it's going to sort by the score, which is a, a number value first. But if they're equal, then it's going to sort by the string. Is that Does that just happen by default because we're sorting a list of tuples? I think I think that has to be it, right? It basically, and that's, that's great. We don't even have to write a, a, a custom comparison function. We just create the tuples with the things we want to sort by. Um, I like that. There's there's many times in my life in JavaScript where I'm trying to sort by multiple things. So like multiple attributes of a thing. So if I just created a tuple of what I wanted to sort by, done. That's cool. Yeah. So this, I so and, and again, Rust people correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the initial value of the fold. This is like a Lambda function that's going to give you the reducer or the previous value, the current value, and then you have your return value. Is that accurate? But this this is the initial value of the fold. I'm not sure, yu gi -Oh, The difference between string.bytes and string.asbytes. Yeah, I would that's my understanding as well, Mark. Basically that you go from from this to this <laughs> in JavaScript. All right. Okay, thank you, XOR. I appreciate appreciate you chiming in. All right, Yada Dev. Let's see how they did it. Um, they just collect all of the strings and then they have sort. They have XOR score, which again, I, I was so close to figure. I mean, it took me 15 minutes to figure out how to how to write this fold, but I was close. I was really close. Um, yeah, the exclusive or it, and then. Um, compare the two exclusive or scores. If they are not equal to each other, return that. So it's going to sort by that. Otherwise, return the comparison of the two strings. All right. Oscar did it with chat GPT, probably. <laughs> At this point, I just assume it, Oscar, because every solution has been, you've used chat GPT so far. Um, and then, yeah, we have exclusive or score. Oh, okay. So this this would have been how to do it. I, I just, I didn't, I think also what I got caught up on, got caught up on is I was thinking that we needed to start with the first character instead of starting with zero. You don't, Oscar? Well, you're just smart then. Um, but if I would have just started it at zero, it would have been just as easy to calculate like that. But I got I got caught up on like well well now I want to use a reduce because I want to use the initial value. I should have just stuck with that. I but I guess I also I didn't know that zero exclusive or some value is the value itself. A vector of tuples. <laughs> um. So we're pushing the string, and the exclusive or score, and then we sort by the key. Fascinating. Lost did it as well. Yeah, so I just, I just, I don't know a lot about bitwise operations. I should probably learn, but that would have helped. If, if I would have known that zero exclusive or some other value is the other value, then yeah. It's fascinating that you can name a variable a type. 
This is what Tomas did here. Right, so for every character in here, char is like a reserved word. Char is the type itself, but you can use it on the next line of code. That's also fascinating. Right, am I, am I, am I getting that right? It's like you can use reserved words. Um, you guess that the zero works and it happened to be correct? Yeah. Huh. Rust is pretty cool. I might have to look at it again. All right, let's see how Will did it. Um, why are you sorting the input string? What is V? Oh, you're pushing. I see. So uh, do the default sort and then sort it again. Wait a second. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, okay, and then this is this is the standard way as well. So you you start off as zero and then exclusive or all of them, and then compare the two. Oof, okay. Um, I didn't know any rest, so my code isn't good. I had to Google everything. Yeah, I had to Google everything too, but I just got caught up on trying to reduce a list using exclusive or. If I would have just written it this way, which makes a lot of sense, I would have been fine. All right, that was fun. We all learned a little bit of Rust. Let's pick uh, one last programming language and then we're gonna get out of here. I have, I also have the option to veto if I don't like it. Swift. That's an interesting one. Let's do Swift. Oh no. <laughs> so, if you're not familiar, Swift is what they use for uh, iOS programming and Apple programming. Also, the music has been on this whole time. Is, uh, uh, are people okay with the music? Everyone's saying no, 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 no. <laughs> See you later, Moonski. Thank you for hanging out. Have a good one. Um, all right, we'll pick another one. Again. Okay, glad to hear Electrothermal. Java? <laughs> Java? Let's do Java. It's 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 the it's classic. We're going to do Java. Here we go. Yeah, from iPhone to Android. Yeah, I guess technically Android these days, they use uh, uh, Kotlin. I don't even know if Kotlin was an option, but here we go. We're going to write some Java. Classic and runs on 3.5 billion devices. Exactly. Oh yeah, we gotta look up at our docs. But the thing is, I've 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 written Java Java before, so I think I can figure it out. It's basically just C sharp. Um, learn Java. <laughs> Do we have to pay to learn Java? For to pay for the Oracle documentation? Uh, what's up, Nicholas? Welcome in. Learning the Java language. Language basics. This might help. Basically, it looks exact. Java looks exactly like JavaScript, except there are type annotations, and everything has to be in a class. That's that's my understanding of it. Uh, let's go. Here we go. Last clash of the day. All right, an international team is exploring a new area. One by one, they keep track of the route. So team members with Imperial system units, foot yard, mile and league. Um, wait, some team members with Imperial units, others with the metric system. Based on their starting coordinates and adding all subsequent displacements in the X and Y direction, <laughs> Uh, okay. Your goal is to calculate their final X and Y position in the same unit as the start unit rounded to the nearest whole number. 
Use the following formulas to convert units. One foot is this many meters. Okay. <laughs> so, so for example, uh, you have three space, on uh, the first line of input, you have three space separated integers. Start X, start Y, and the number of directions. So start X, start Y is zero. And then we're gonna be seeing th three directions after that. Oh, and then three directions. The line after that is um, a starting unit, which is going to be foot, yard, meters, kilometers, miles, or leagues. You then have in direction lines. And then the final output should be X, Y positions rounded to whole numbers in, in the metric system. What's the output? Oh, in the same unit as the start put. So the, the output needs to be in meters as well. Okay. Excuse me. This is going to take a lot of conversion, but uh, basically uh, most of the setup should be done for us. So if we look at the code that they've given us, yeah, they already have the start X, the start Y, and then the starting unit. Um, cool. And then we have each of the directions. So um, the directions, we need the X, Y, and the unit. Um, so... Um, we have a split on a space. Um, uh, not even a constant. <laughs> what is this? Uh, I think we can. Can we use var in Java? The things. Uh, it doesn't like that var. This is a string array. Yeah, things. So uh, that's going to give us. Um, I guess can we destructure in in Java? Let's just call this the current line. Let's call this directions. Yeah, great. Now the um, uh, X is going to be directions at zero. And then I want to cast that to be an integer? Will that work? Uh, Java string to int. How to convert a string to an integer in Java. Need a whole article on it. <laughs> uh, integer dot parse int. Um, and it, this could throw an exception, but it shouldn't. integer cool so that gives us the x uh this is going to give us the y and then um the unit is going to be directions at two um Why doesn't it like this? Method print line integer is not defined. Do string? <laughs> Method print line string is not defined. Java print integer. Lowercase l? Oh, good call. So yeah, this is what I want to see. So basically we see 10, 10, M, 1, 1, K, M, 100, 100. Okay, so we've done we've done the parsing, <laughs> step one. Uh, step two is now we need to calculate the, um, 
the the next coordinate. So, um, the 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 unit that we got, the start unit here, everything needs to be in that unit. So I'm gonna convert to that unit if it is not that unit. So, um, we'll say uh, unit X will be convert. We'll pass in X and the unit that we want to convert to. Convert unit. So we'll create our own method called convert unit. Um, and then unit Y. Um, oh, and then, and then, so yeah, this is actually the from unit. Convert from that to that. I don't know if I can do this in eight minutes. Can I write all of this code? Um, and then after we've converted it, should be fine. We can just take start X plus equal the unit X and start Y plus equal the unit Y. So now all we have to do is implement this convert unit and we should be good. Uh, Cause at the end of it all, we'll output um, start X to string plus a space plus start Y to string. They're all lowercase. Cannot invoke two string on the primitive type. Cool. Cool. All right. So now at this point, now we all, all we have to do is implement convert unit. Um, so convert unit. And again, oh, don't pass the wrong thing in. Um, uh, we need a public static, uh, integer convert unit that takes in the uh, integer, well, I guess int, we don't got to specify integer. So we have the int value, we have the string uh, from unit, and then the string to unit. Uh, for now, I'm just going to return value. Cool. Closer closer so we will say uh, if the from unit is equal to the to unit I guess the best way to do this would be convert everything to meters and then at the end of it all convert the thing we're going to convert unit to meters Yeah, I think I think that's the better way to go. We do, let's just do everything to meters. Um, uh, convert unit to meters. Um, and we pass in the to unit, or the from unit. And I only have five minutes left to do this. I don't know if I can do it. Um, but that means once we get the start X, we actually want to convert it to meters to begin with. Well, no, because now whatever the input they tell us to be, we have to convert it to that. Well, we can, we'll convert it from meters, which is fine. Um... What if it's already in meters? We just return the value itself. This unit of the starting position. Yeah. So uh, we can say start X is convert unit to meters with start X and 
the start unit. Um, yeah, so convert everything to meters, add it, and then at the end of it all, we're going to need to convert to um, start unit. Um, okay, so now, now we have all of the units that we need to convert to meters, uh, so we can use this. Um, so if from unit is equal to uh, m, then just return the existing value. Um, otherwise, if Uh, from unit, I guess that this makes sense to use a switch case. Switch case. So we're gonna switch on the from unit. That's gonna give us each case. Uh, we have the case of ft. And we return um, value times that. How does the switch case work in uh, in Java? Um, case I'm just gonna write if statements because I don't know I can't I can't I don't know why that's that syntax is complaining. So if the from unit is equal to um, feet. Then we return value times that. Why is this complaining? Cannot convert from double to int. Oh! Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um. If from unit equals this, not that, this, then we will, Start these off as doubles instead. The method convert unit to meters. We need to, I don't think I got, I've only got 13 seconds left. This isn't it. Um, I think I was, I was close. I don't know. Cause basically here we try to convert it to what it was. Well, only two people got it. I was very close. I think I, I was still missing the last piece where I needed to convert it back to the input type at the end. Um, so I was still missing that. It, would, it, it only would have worked if the, uh, if the input type was meters. That's the only time my solution would have worked. But also I would need to, I need to convert them back to integers to get rid of the decimal place. 
Oh, Yada did it. Yada did it, it, it right at the timer, at the, at the buzzer. Okay, let's let's see how uh, Mordecai did it in five. They did it in five minutes. Um, all right. We have our starting get conversion factor. Nice. So a similar idea, but we need to convert. Um, and then, yeah, we have all of the tokens. So we have the X, the Y, and then the unit that is it, it is in. So we then need to convert it using that unit. And then we just change X by there. Yeah, and then we get the conversion factor of the input unit as well. This is, I mean, this is almost exactly what I did in terms of the math that's happening. Like the code is different because you're using a switch case. So it's very close to what I did. Um, then they need to convert it back to the original unit. So, I mean, I was kind of just missing this piece right here. Yeah. But also, I, I needed to convert it to uh, an integer. Like, uh, uh, th this would potentially have decimals in it, wouldn't it? Because that's that's one of the reasons mine was outputting the wrong thing here. Is because I have start X and start Y as a double, and then it was like outputting their decimal places. Oh, because you did round, maybe? Yeah. Cool. I was I was two lines away. <laughs> two lines away of getting it. Um, though I actually, I mean, was I though? Was I? Because I converted it and then I increment X by it and then X and Y start off as that unit. It's a long? But a long would have a decimal place. Oh well. Great work, Mordecai. Um, do you code in Java on the on the regular? <laughs> you figured it out pretty quickly. Uh, Toto C did it in Java in 13 minutes. They've got a nice little switch case here for all of the different conversions. Um, to and from, yeah, yeah. So they have the uh, <laughs> uh, meter to a value and then value in meters. Um, so yeah, the starting X and Y, they just turn it into meters and then for every one they find, they turn it into meters and then you're done. I think I was kind of trying to go, I was trying to go this route though. No, but at the end of it all, they still have to do meter to unit. So that makes sense. So at the end of it all, they needed to convert it back to whatever unit the input was. That's cool. All right. Uh, that took a lot out of me. <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I was close. I don't know. I was close. I was still, I probably still needed another two or three minutes to be able to solve it, but oh well. That was fun. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Um, definitely tune in. Uh, Friday is the next stream. Uh, shortest mode in JavaScript? <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll end it here. Here's the thing. If it's, if it's going to take me a long time, then maybe I won't. Um, All right, yeah, before we go, one last one. Shortest mode in JavaScript, here we go. <laughs> Did you ask a question, Genio? Uh, or, hello. Are you go you're going to ask me a question? Or you're talking about them telling me to do this before? <laughs> no, Ruby, no problem. Yeah, Ru Ruby makes it, makes it uh, super short. Uh, here we go. And uh, Madetho, or Madetto? Thank you for the prime. You're new. Appreciate you. Thanks for, thanks for the support. Um, uh, cool. Yeah, I'm a software engineer. I've been I've been using computers for 
over 20 years. I've been programming for over 15 years. I, I do have a lot of experience. Uh, I would say all of the stuff that I cover in that video, um, in the video that they're talking about is the Mac setup video. Uh, years of experience, but you probably, you probably don't need, I mean, you, you can learn everything I talked about in that video in like under six months, because all the stuff that I talked about in that video, um, I, I used to teach at a, at a code school and it was a six month long program. I mean, the students were able to set up and knew, knew all the tools like before the six months were over. So it just takes time. It just takes time. I would say if you're overwhelmed at first, just take it one step at a time. Um, also, I'm wasting time. Actually, you, here's the thing, though. It's not fastest mode. It's shortest number of characters. So I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, my, my advice, take it one step at a time um, because I learned all of these things one step at a time. So yeah, you're not expected to know all of this stuff. And But I would, I would expect that you, as, as a computer science student, you can learn all of the stuff that I talk about in the video. Yeah. That's, that's, that's mainly it. So, um, I look at it as goals, right? These are, these are also potential learning targets that you can say, oh, wait, I want to learn more about how to use the terminal now and just focus on that. Or I want to learn more about like how to use Node.js and you just focus on that. But yeah, take it one step at a time, but I, I think you can figure it out. Okay. In shortest mode, you absolutely want to get rid of all the comments. You want to get rid of, um, also spaces, semicolons, and yeah, print should still work like this. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Genio, you got this one step at a time. Okay. You are given a string which contains letters and or digits. You have to transform the string by converting all the letters first in the order the letters appear in the string. And after that, converting all the digits in the order the digits appear in the string. The two parts are then joined together. Each letter is converted to its ASCII code and then converted to binary. Each digit is converted directly to binary. So, um, wait, what? <laughs> well, the problem description is weird. I think you literally, if, if it's a digit, just convert it to binary. If it's a letter, convert it to the ASCII code. And uh, Jeannie, thank you for the prime. You didn't have to do that. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you for the support. Um, okay. <sighs> Here's what we gotta do. We gotta do S, we're gonna map over each of the digits, and then um, if I if I convert a string to a number, does that, so if I do like A, like this, no, that doesn't work. Do I have to use char code app? Uh, and shameful manatee, thank you for the prime as well. A lot of new prime subs today, thank you all, I appreciate you. Uh, no, I think I have to do char code at. I think it's, I think this is the only, or char code. Char code at. Is this the only way to do this in JavaScript? It's the only way I know of. Like this. Um. So really what we want is if the digit is nan. Then we want uh, the char code. Otherwise, we'll convert the digit to a number. Um, and we want to take that whole thing. And in JavaScript, you can. Um, If you take a number and you do two string, you can pass in the radix uh, like this, and that'll convert it to binary. So um, two string two. I appreciate that, Modefo. Uh, missing parentheses after argument list. Yeah, that would make sense. So that's the map, that's the print, and then we want to join it all together um, into a single string. S.map is not a function. Yeah, that makes sense. We need to split this first. Cool. 
now we need to join that whole thing back together. This does it, but this is a lot of characters. Can I do it in a shorter number of characters? Um, yeah, so, oh, that broke it, though. Well, <laughs> I have no, don't know how I'm going to fix that. Uh, Lurian did it in 764 characters. I bet they used ChatGPT, maybe. They just plugged in the answer. Uh, letters and uppercase. Okay. A big, bigger number of memes. Is Isnan doing what I expected it to do? So if I do Isnan of like the letter A, that is true. If I do Isnan of the string one, that is false. So I think that is doing what I want it to do. Um, let's not join it into an array. And let's return um, the thing itself and The letter. So for like letters first, digits second. Oh, oh, uh, Wizwazi, thank you for the prime. So many new primes. You, you, you're too kind. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so this this complicates everything. <laughs> this complicates everything. Um. Because if we want the want the characters to appear first, we basically have to like oof oof. I mean, I'll do it on one line because I mean, let's get it working first. So the characters are going to be um split it into an array. Actually, we could, we could reduce this. Would that be shorter than two splits? Let's do it with two splits. So split the input. Um, into an array and then give me all of the letters and then the numbers are going to be um, that and then we can do um, uh, so we filter all of the characters, and then we map that to grab uh, each character, and we do C dot char code at zero. Can't they be sorted? I guess if you sorted it, then it would, I don't know if it would put the numbers at the end though. We'd need a custom sort function. Uh, you might be right. Um, So really all I want is c.concat in join it all together. Okay, so this this does it. Uh, oh no, it, did, it didn't solve it for that one. Um Put the number three on the end there. Why? solve it um I gotta do this <sighs> okay so that solves it in 150 characters 
Um, can we make it less? Oh, oh, my my avatar. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, an old viewer made it. I haven't seen them in the stream in a long time, but uh, one day they just sent it to me because it was like fan art. Um, okay, we solved it. But here's the thing. I think we can rewrite those two lines as a reduce um, instead. So like the reduce gives us back C and N. Um, and this is going to be S dot reduce. And we reduce giving C and N and each individual digit or character. Um, let's write it out as a full thing first. Um, uh, and we're reducing to uh, this. Wait, right? No. Two arrays. Array of arrays. Um, so here we can we can return C and N. Um, let's see what this, this should just give us an empty array. C is not defined. comma in so we're, we're destructuring these two values and then here we're destructuring them I mean just give it another character to do something like this the, the destructuring without let is tricky it's probably shorter just to do let cool um, all right now uh, <laughs> now that we have this uh, if uh, is Nan You have 121 characters? I only got a minute left. Okay, so uh, if it's a string, then uh, we want to do uh, j.push this code here. Let's just call this C because uh, C, we're doing it. So, um, otherwise, we push this we push this into uh, uh, in and then we return um, Jaden nice um, so to one line this we can use the comma operator we can do um, this, comma, this, th with parentheses. 30 seconds left. But it's 276 characters. Here's the thing. It's, it's shorter if I just do it in two lines like this. That's 150. No, no. Uh, C and uh, flip 14 seconds. C and in. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to submit this. 150 characters. Oof. Oof. Alka did it in 121. Ah, and Well did it in 92. Wait, no. I removed the comments, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Oh. 
You're right. If I were to remove the comments... Can I edit in here? Um, you're totally right. I forgot to remove the comments. Let's see how long this is. So that's 119 characters. If you compare that to to this, this two things, or is this less than 119 characters? Yeah, so this is 103. This was still, this was still shorter than the reduce. Um, okay. All right, let's see how Whale did it in 92 characters. They did a four of loop. Okay, how did they, how did they change if it's on the begin, if, if the letters are at the beginning versus the end? Um, so if it's lowercase, no, not if it's lowercase, if it's not. Let's try to, let's try to, yeah, do you mean like <laughs> un, unminify it? I guess so because if it's it's going to be it's got to just be zero through nine yeah that's a good way to think about it so i was using is nan but basically capital a is like 30 something so if the character is less than that then it has to be a digit okay but yeah let's 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 write this out and then what did you print I guess you had two running variables, X and Y, which were the beginning and the end. Yeah, we can look and see what A, what A is. Um, Sixty-five. So it's much larger than I thought. But yeah, so if, if basically the only digits that we could come across are zero through nine, and zero through nine are all less than sixty-five. Um, and actually it would be the string so string zero is that less than that true Oof. okay so uh let's write this out if the char let's call this char so if the ch character is less than a then we convert it to a number and convert it to binary. I mean, yeah, so yeah. I think I was basically just missing that logic because it, it's so similar to what I was doing. Um, but then you didn't, you didn't, so I did it in two for loops and then I did this, basically this whole thing in a reduce. Instead of a reduce, you just have two variables. That makes so much sense. Uh, so this is like all digits are less than capital A, <laughs> which is why it's a number. Um, and if you haven't seen uh, this syntax before in JavaScript, uh, this is the unary plus. So basically it's the same thing as like taking a string and passing it into the number constructor, uh, like that. Oh, and then charcoal at, you don't have to pass zero into it? Yeah, th there's a lot of things that I uh, <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Um, yeah, you don't have to pass zero into it, so that's one less character, too. Cool. And then uh, this little bit of magic right here, it's not even magic, it's like, instead of having to define these variables on a separate line, uh, we literally define them um, inside of the function invocation, because Java just, JavaScript just throws that away. So that saves some characters as well. Um, and then, like, I, I rarely see this anymore, but you, you technically can do a double assignment like that, where it, it creates two variables and assigns it to uh, a single value. Yeah. 
Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's actually doing coercion there. I think it's actually doing the um, string comparison. So it's uh, it, it's actually doing this. It's doing um, zero less than a, and I don't think it coerces. I think it um, maybe maybe it coerces by doing char code at under the hood automatically. Because this is what's happening. Because like this will be like zero through nine. I don't think it's converting it to numbers. It's doing the the built-in JavaScript way of um, because, like, you can compare uh, A and B. Oh no, but it's not. It's not a chart code. There, it, this line of code is comparing two strings. These are two strings. Um, because it's going to be the string zero, one, two, three, four, or five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um. Not a char code. I don't know. <laughs> Save a character using a, ter a ternary. Yeah, yeah. So I was just converting their long code. They were using a ternary. I think, I think. Yeah, yeah. So th this is comparing two characters. You're totally right, though. If, if we were comparing a number to a string, then it would try to coerce one of the others. Um... Still could have done less than 65. Oh, that would have saved them three characters. You're totally right. Or it would have saved them one character because otherwise they, that they did three. So they actually could have written 65. Yeah. <laughs> well, great work, Will. Yeah, you did a good job. Um, this makes total sense. So then uh, now that we have those two strings, I guess that's the other thing is I could have used strings instead of arrays. I don't know why I was like concatenating and joining into an array. Fascinating. All right, let's see how Alka did it. They also, they used a reduce, but they got it down to 121 characters. Um, turn it into an array. We have our accumulator P. We have the individual character and then what <laughs> what oh they're junk so that you can save some characters by putting those in the same line okay <laughs> and then uh P is our accumulator. P is going to be in is going to be zero or one because we need to put it into the res the accumulator array here. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check it out. In is true or false. <laughs> If it's true, then it's the zeroth index because true coerced to a number is zero. Or sorry, sorry, is one. It's then it's the first index. But if it's false, then it's the zeroth index. So in is true or false, meaning is it a, a letter or is it a uh, a number? Yeah. Okay. Then uh, we we do the we do this here. So if it was a uh, letter then we have to get the character code otherwise we use the number converted to a digit and then we two string it um oh but that makes a lot of sense too the last join here because then you can just join these two arrays on a single line instead of putting them in a variable oof, oof. all right we'll look at totos and then we're done for today um this looks very similar to alcas uh so read the input. Is nan of n is the same as n not equal n? I, I don't think so, right? Did I say two arrays? Yeah, it's a single array with two strings and then that gets joined together. I was using an array of two arrays. Okay, 
uh, we're going to map over the input string. If the current thing is not nan, then nothing? Otherwise, binary. I see. So somehow you were still able to get it into 137 characters, but basically you, you do one pass with all of the numbers, you get their binary, and you can cat that to another pass of all of the digits converted to binary. Oof. Wow. <laughs> no, I got I got to go. <laughs> I've been live for 4 hours. We got to get out of here. That was so fun though. Again, thank you everybody for hanging out. Uh tune in on Friday. We're going to be doing some full stack. I don't know why I typed that twice. We're going to be doing some full stack web development with SvelteKit. Uh but if you check out the calendar, um you can see when I'm going to be live in your specific time zone. Um, I'm announcing this right here, right now. You all are the first to hear it on Monday. Let me check, double check the time on Monday. I'm going to be doing a Q and a on stream with Mishko Hevry, uh, current CTO of quick and the original creator of angular JS and angular. He's going to be on stream for a Q and a, um, let me confirm the time really quick. Monday at roughly the same. Uh, if, if you see this in your time zone, it's gonna be that. Uh, it's gonna be that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a chat with the mods. <laughs> um, about what we should be moderating. Um. So yeah. So Monday at around this time, uh, Mishko Hevery is gonna be on stream. So I'm gonna put it on the calendar. I'm also gonna announce it, but definitely tune in for that as well. Um, and follow me over on YouTube. I also have a Twitter. We have a Discord. I think that's it. I think that's it. That's all. Um, let's get out of here. <laughs> if you are a sub, you can use this raid message. We're going to go on a raid next. I don't know who we're going to raid, but uh, whoever we raid, show them lots of love. Drop a follow if you like what they're doing. All that good stuff. Uh, and I hope to see you on Friday and also Monday. Yeah. <laughs> the perfect story. <laughs> come on, come on. I don't think he feels bad about Angular. I mean, uh, Angular... Angular changed the world. Uh, yeah, it really did. I, I, We probably wouldn't have React if we didn't have Angular. Or, I mean, we wouldn't have React in, in its current form if we didn't have Angular. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have Vue if we didn't if we didn't have Angular. I don't know. I used I used Angular uh, back in like 2012. I built a lot of cool stuff with it. So cool. All right. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.